Hi, everybody, and happy Galentine's Day. Hello, hello. It's so wonderful to see you all out there and to hang with my gal pals, Sarah James and Rachel Malice, yeah. to kick off our Galentine's Day event today. Oh, so much fun. This is an annual event that Jesse James Beads and Softflex Company put on every single year where we get to gather with all of our beady friends here online and some amazing gal pal designers to celebrate peace, love, beads, and friendship. I'm so excited. We have, we, today is, so it's an, this is an annual event that Jesse James Beads and Softflex put on together. And today is quite the marathon of jewelry making. In the past, we've split this up over two days. We've had two designers on one day, two designers on the next day. But today we said, you know what? We're going all in. We're going February 13th, actual Galentine's Day. And we're going to do four classes, four hours of jewelry making. It's a freaking marathon right here on Facebook and YouTube for all of our friends out there to be able to watch, enjoy, and learn something new. I love it. And if you don't know, Galentine's Day was started by the funny Leslie Nope. <laughs> I did not know this. Actually. Did you not know this? On her show. And it just sort of took off. And it's now everywhere because it's just so fantastic. <laughs> I have a few funny Leslie Nope quotes here, too. Um, she says, <laughs> if there's a law against friendship, lock me up. <laughs> it's from the lovely Leslie Nope. And then she also says, um, <laughs> she, we need to remember what's important in life. And I'm going to I'm going to change one of these to, to beads, I think. But she said, friends, waffles, I say beads and work. Or yeah. waffles, beads, friends, and work. It doesn't matter, but work is third. <laughs> From Leslie, nope. I actually I just had think... waffles like 20 minutes ago. Did you? <laughs> Rachel is on brand for today. I, did, I didn't know. We didn't know. We, didn't know. we should have all had waffles like... for breakfast, like Dang Rachel. <laughs> Oh well, my gosh. I, mean, I love the sense of Galentine's Day. I did not know that this came from the sitcom Parks and Rec, Leslie Nope, that Kristen was just quoting for us. I always thought of Galentine's Day just a day to celebrate, celebrate our like, gal, our I like our gal pal friendship. And you know, they think they say Valentine's Day, like February is a season of love. So Valentine's Day, we're celebrating love, love. But there's so many different types of love. There's friend love. There's a love that we have for our animals. There's the love that we have for creativity. There's a love we have for self. There's a love we have for life. And I feel like all of us really just like vibe as the same tribe here online in our jewelry making communities because we have a passion for creativity. We have a thirst for life and we have a caring for our fellow makers and our friends and the friends that we have developed through this maker community. Oh, you said it so perfectly, Miss <laughs> Sarah James. I mean, really, it's just that's what it's all about. It's all about the love. It's all about the friendships. It's all about the beads all day, every day. <laughs> and I just can't wait to see all of the fantastic things in store for all of you out there today. Um, I know that we have a few kits left over at softlexcompany.com. Mm -hmm. They are on sale. So you can go grab the supply kit over there. There's not a ton. Wow. Um, no, but there are a handful. So as you're watching today, and I know you'll be inspired if you haven't picked up your kits yet, grab the supply kits from us at softlexcompany.com and go grab the bead kits from Jesse James Beads at jessejamesbeads.com. And this way you can always watch all the replays and make with all of us um, a little bit later. Today you can hang, be inspired, um, just you know, chat it up with your gal pals and then um, you can always watch the replays to make everything on your own after. And we really do have so many fun designs coming up. We've got Rachel Malice here. She's going to be in our first hour teaching us today. Then we have Jennifer Miller. After that, we've got Deb Floros. And then wrapping everything up, we have Brittany Chavers. So like four powerhouse designers starting with Rachel right here today. So awesome. 
Amazing. And it's all going to be um, hopefully with no issues on this stream. If we do have any technical issues, just look for us to kind of pop back up, right? Um, as always. But we just kind of plan to stay here, hang out on this video. So you can pop in and pop out. And um, you should hopefully be able to find the entire event all on this one stream, which is pretty amazing. I think so too. It. It's like you don't even have to like Netflix isn't even like, are you still watching? Yes, I'm still watching and it's still going. <laughs> like my deep that deep question, deep. when I get that question, I'm like, oh gosh, I am. <laughs> Should I be? <laughs> if you if you like pause it periodically, it asks you less, just like a pro tip. Oh, pro tip. Like, stop That's so funny. Netflix. Yeah, I'm still watching. Facebook and this broadcast will not do that to you. So you can just we're not gonna we're not gonna shame you for still watching. <laughs> no shame in your B game. No. <laughs> I like that. Kristen with the quotes today. I'm just, yeah, I'm just channeling my Leslie. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. I love that we can like all be characters like on our own sort of like beady reality show sitcom here. <laughs> you know, like yes. it's it's real. It's it's real live TV. Accidents can happen. Bloopers are real life. And um, and the coolest thing is that we get to hang out with each other, you know? Sarah, I just have to ask, is your um your X's and O's lighting up right yeah. now? Yeah, it's <gasps> it's like a whole scene here. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That right. just went even more epic than I thought. I'm like, I wasn't sure if I was getting a flash of light. And then I'm like, no, I think they're lighting up. Oh, there's, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> we, uh, we lost we lost power at my house here. Well, at my mom's house. I'm in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. If you're in the Northeast Corridor here, you might have experienced some snow as well. Um, internet was down. Power was out. I was able to get a hot shower today with the rest of the water that was left in the pipe. So, you know, that was going for me. But oh, my goodness. Jesse James Warehouse. The lights are on. The internet is on. I'm like, I'm here for it. Oh, that's awesome. And let's talk about Rachel's glasses real fast. I mean, how amazing are those? Thank you. <laughs> I um, I needed new glasses. And, you know, I was like, how am I going to encourage myself to wear these instead of just putting my contacts in all the time? So I think you nailed it. I needed the gems. It yeah, that's when me. you're feeling a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're beautiful. I love them. And I'm just like drawn to it. What a great shape. And I love all the, I love all the sparkle and gems. So awesome. I cannot see without them. So <laughs> I love that you have them. That's wonderful. We're all glad you can see today, Rachel. <laughs> Trust me, that would be an interesting class. <laughs> what are you planning to share with us? Do you? Yes. So I, uh, I have a project made. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um so we uh, we were all able to select little it was really hard to like now not be greedy and pick the entire kit to put in my project but i um i picked the uh the crystal uh saucers and we're gonna make this and I what i wanted to do with this is um make it so that you could kind of wear it how you wanted so you could wear this as a necklace you could wear this as a bracelet you could use it as another part and add stuff onto it um you could I probably really... wear it as a headband <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i think i totally would <laughs> <laughs> you totally could this this um gorgeous silk is so long that you could wear it as a headband you could really do it maybe a belt if you have a tiny waist, yeah, I don't know that it would fit me, but um, I'm gonna stick with the headband. You know, you're like a, a bicep, like I don't know, Some upper headband arm might be the best option. <laughs> I love that. That's really fun, and there's so many ways that you can enjoy it, and just depends on your day, your mood, your outfit. I think that's I love fantastic. A versatile piece. Yeah, I do great. too. It looks awesome, and you know what? This is um, this is such a great day of of artistry and design and learning. 
everyone that's come to the table here, all of our designers, the team at Jesse James Beads, the team at Softlex has worked really hard to bring together this really cool event from the graphics that were created by, I believe, our dear Kristen Fagan here. You're amazing. That was me. Really good. You're like, thank you. You got to gas up our girl, Kristen, because she is such an amazing, amazing artist. And um, and you bring that to, to the table here for us to just kind of set the scene and set the vibe for our love, beads, and friendship Valentine's Day jewelry making party. Um, Thank and, you. And you guys always bring it to at Jesse James Bead. So I was just trying to like level up, you know, and we <laughs> so I appreciate that. That was really sweet. Um, so shall we like, should we start getting into some making? What do you guys yeah. think? Are we ready? Let's do it. I hope we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to pop out and let uh, Sarah James take over hosting for now. And Yay. you may see me kind of pop back in a little bit later. So have fun. Enjoy designing yeah. with Rachel. And uh, I can't wait to see what um, see what everyone makes today. Your nails. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye, pals. Well, Bye. <laughs> later, gal pals. <laughs> All right, and then number two. I'm gonna go ahead and also flip my camera around. Awesome, and as soon as Rachel gets that, as soon as Rachel gets our camera down, we will spotlight to the mat so we can get to creating this really great project. So I'm just reaching over here. Kristen was mentioning that there are kits available. I think we've got 15 left on jessiejamesbeads.com. You get everything that you need to make all of the projects that you are about to see created here today. We've got four designers, four hours of creating. I know there's gonna be more than four projects because there's gonna be some necklaces that have earrings, some bracelets, oh, totally. some matchy matchy parts. Um, so anyway, if you haven't yet gotten a kit and just coming to hang out with us today, enjoy it. If you want to create what it is that you're seeing, go on over to jessiejamesbees.com and softlexcompany.com. Rachel, you let me know when you're ready and then I'm going to spotlight for everybody. Yeah, I'm just trying to get this to not seem wobbly. Does this, everything look okay? I think it does. Yeah, I'm going to solo layer for you guys. So I'll be here in the background, everybody. And Rachel, let's see what you've got for us today. Yay. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay. So what we have here is what I was showing you before. This is our, our versatile piece. And for this project, I picked, um, initially, I used the pink softlex. Today, I'm going to do it in the white just because I'm kind of curious. Um, and there's so much softlex on here that you'll definitely have enough for this and other projects. So we use that and then I use these cute little clover, orange clover beads that were from the, what did I do with it? The little bead mix. I love these containers too. I feel like every time I get anything from Jesse James, I always end up with like lots of really cute containers too. Yeah. This was also in the bead mix. Um, I love this. It is so wonderful. And then we're going to use probably like three, three quarters, maybe of these beautiful little crystals. I am obsessed with them. They're like beautiful peachy color. And then of course we've got the dyed silk, which is such a good length too. So if you wanted to use this for multiple projects, you really don't need the whole length for this project, probably if you were using it as a headband, um, you would, but um, if you were just doing like the wrap bracelet or whatever, uh, you could totally cut this in half and use it for more product. Oh, I love it so much. It kind of, I didn't want to cut it because I love it. <laughs> All right, and then we're also gonna need some crimps um, that I seem to have hidden from myself. Oh, they're underneath the ear wires. Okay, we got them. False alarm. So we're going to start by cutting our soft flex wire and we're going to use four crimps for this project, by the way. I am going to be using the magical crimping pliers for this project, but you could totally use regular crimping pliers. It's just personal preference. And let's get some, let's get some wire cut. So we're gonna cut like, I like to cut a significant amount of extra just so you don't have to worry about 
worry about playing um, wire chicken or running out. <laughs> um, and plus when you cut a lot extra, then there's usually enough left. Like if you cut like a lot extra as opposed to just a little bit extra, you have enough left for another project I find. So at minimum, you need like 24 inches for this project, but I'm gonna cut more like 30. I'm gonna do math in my head. <laughs> I have a 14 inch ruler. Um, all right, there we go. And I'm going to just cut there. I love the little clippy things. Makes me feel so fancy. Okay, so we are going to kind of meet not make. We're going to fold it in half just so we can kind of see where the end is. Uh, or not the end is, the middle is. And then I'm going to slide a crimp bead onto one side, just one side. Because in order to get the circles, you want to put the, we're going to want to put the other wire through the crimp bead this way. And I'm just kind of keeping a hold on it so that I can kind of keep it in the middle, but it's not like a big deal. If not, you can definitely pull. Yeah, that didn't end up being centered. Um, but it's not, since we have extra, like it's not centered. I went the wrong way and made it too long on the other side. Um, Since we have extra, like the centering really isn't like a crucial step. Um, Get it good enough. And you'll decide how large you want your loop here. Um, you want it large enough, especially if you're using the the magical crimping pliers, you want it large enough to be able to get the pliers into it. But you also want to be able to replicate the size. So if you have a, any bail making pliers or anything, this is a, a tip I like to do. Um, I never crimp things well, I shouldn't say never. I don't crimp things on the clasps uh, a lot of the time. A lot of the time I just crimp like an open loop so I can do whatever I want later on. Um, so it's great to have these kind of things because you can kind of size it on there and then crimp it without worrying too much. The Softflex really doesn't slip around a lot, which is great um, for doing your loops. So I've got my little loop there. And I'm going to come in with my magical crimping pliers. I love these things. It feels like cheating when I use them. Yeah, and the Softflex crimps really are the best. This is like everyone in the beading world knows it. They talk mm -hmm. about it. Like I am. Um, you know, I actually learned, it's so funny. I've been making jewelry for like 20 years. Um, and, but I never, I, you know, I was learning kind of like as a kid, so I didn't really have access to, um, or know what to have access to, to learn like stringing and crimping and stuff. So I tried to do crimping and I tried to use like, 30 gauge like craft wire and like some really cheap crimps and everything just broke always so I was like okay crimping must be for like masters like it was <laughs> not me um and I actually I learned to do stringing and crimping during the um during the pandemic actually oh that's <laughs> <laughs> and then I just kind of like went crazy with it okay so now that we're at this point I've got my little my little um crimp right there i love how round they look they look so fancy okay and we're gonna be building up to this size so you could do them all the same size if you wanted i wanted kind of like a graduation in size so we're gonna start with five crystals on each side and then we're gonna uh string one of these uh clovers onto one side 
and then we'll do it again. <laughs> so let's go, let's start. All right, two, three. There was a, a class I was doing, um, it was a couple years ago, I guess at this point. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna make a double strand necklace and we're gonna use like three millimeter beads. And <laughs> the comments on that video were like, this is like watching paint dry. <laughs> like, note to self, next time pre-record that and just speed it up. <laughs> That's so funny. We talk about that with um with jewelry making classes about how like cooking show, like sometimes it really is a benefit to do like a cooking show version of a class. Right. <laughs> I um I'm always like, oh, I'd love to go like live every day. And I'm like, I really don't think they want to see me stare at my beading mat for three hours. Um, <laughs> so I've got this all strung on here and I have the clover on one side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through the clover like we did the um, the crimp. These have a really great size hole, which was perfect for this design. So we're going to go through the hole and it'll be coming out like that. And then... You just pull it. It's so satisfying. I feel like it's like watching one of those videos where they're just like click, click, click. The ASMR videos. Um, okay, and then we're gonna do. Um, we're just gonna do six now. Are you graduating the loops just by one bead, or yes? So it's just by one bead, but because you're doing one on each side, it ends up being two. Yes. Um, I actually did try it, just in case you're wondering, I did try it with two and I liked how it looked better this way. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, three. So I'm doing six this time and then I'll do another clover. Four. Six. It doesn't matter which side you put the clover on. So don't worry too much about that. I'll just count and make sure I actually did get six. Okay, perfect. All of the projects that we're learning today um, are really, I imagine, to be very like um, almost like like meditational. The way that we're doing it's like stringing is so relaxing. And right. We have craft wire out today. We are like stringing on soft leg, putting some beads on string, and turning them into pretty jewelry projects. Yes, you don't have to to worry so much about loops or whatever. Right. Um, it's just like very chill. Okay, so I'm gonna do seven now. Just going up by one. Maria has a good question in the crowd. She's asking, can we watch this again later? And the answer to that is absolutely. You yeah. can live you can pop in and out as you want we are going to be broadcasting until 7 p.m eastern 4 p.m pacific we broadcasting live from those hours but you can come back tomorrow or the next day or next week or next year or whatever you want and watch this video again either on softlex or jesse james beads youtube or facebook just go to the video section of facebook and then on youtube you can can find this video as well. They're under the name Galentine's Day. Yes, I think they they put the live videos under like a separate section on YouTube where it says um, live. So if you're having trouble finding it, I would look to see if you can find that on the Jesse James or Softflex profile. But there's some great videos on both of those. So if you don't find this one initially, I would definitely recommend poking around. I always have fun doing that. <laughs> this project is coming together so beautifully. I love watching it come together, Rachel. I love how different it looks based on um, based on what color wire you use. Too. Oh, yeah. I think that's so uh, such such a benefit of like trans translucent transparent beads yes um, is that it's so easy to just like completely transform oh my gosh yeah do you guys see that look at it what what wire did you use for the, the sample that we're looking at there? i used pink you use pink mm -hmm. um, wow. i'm sure it's it's got a better name than that um <laughs> pink tourmaline <laughs> and now i am using white quartz 
I just, I really wanted to know what it was, <laughs> would look like. I made it and then I was like, man, I really wonder what it would have looked like on the white. And I was like, well, I have the white. So I could just do the class with the white and then we can see. Yeah, that was, that was a good idea to show us a couple different options of how, you know, the wire really does play a, a role in the overall color and look of the piece. Mm -hmm. And it really, um, it all goes so well together too, really. These cute little beads that Rachel's working with right now can be found in the Galentine's Day bead kit from Jesse James Beads over at jessejamesbeads.com. And the little teeny ones, they're um, they're not quite a bicone. It's like a... It's like a saucer is what I was calling them. Hmm, yeah. I was I was calling it like a like a like a bicone that was squished, but I think saucer might be a little more um succinct and make sense make a little They're more kind sense. of like UFO shaped. So yeah. <laughs> I love a saucer though. I think it's fun. It gives it's such a another um just another look. Mm -hmm. Um eight. Okay. So this last circle we've got eight, and of course you could keep going forever, but um I wanted to make sure I had enough of my little clovers for this design, but they're actually, I tried on, we're going to use some of the other beads and some of the other amazing projects um, some of these have today, but you could, most of the beads, I think actually had pretty good size holes um, that you could totally just switch out for a different one if you really wanted to. All right. And then this is the clover. Forgive me, I have shaky hands, so sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle. All right. Okay, perfect. I really do love how it's looking on the white quartz. Okay, now this part is like a tiny bit tricky, but not really. I would say this is the trick. Mm, it's not the trickiest part. The trickiest part is the second loop, I think. And it, it's even that's not that tricky, but just preparing you. <laughs> I'm going to do it, and then everyone's going to be like, that was not hard, Rachel. That was. <laughs> so you are going to string your crimp onto both wires going the same direction. So not like we did at the beginning. They're going in the same direction. Um, cause we're going to put them through the majestic focal bead, uh, together. I like that name for it. And the reason I did it like this, cause you could totally just string the bead on now instead of the crimp, but I really just didn't want anything to shift. Um, so I'm pulling the wires down and the crimp down to, um, almost be flush with so the side of the clover bead. And it doesn't have to be completely up against it. The whole point is just so that the wires really don't shift. Not that I really think they probably would, but I like to not have to fuss with things at the end of a project. I just like it to be everything to be where I put it and stay there. All right. So I'm just doing my crimping. And again, you can use a regular crimper if you wanted. Um, I never know when to stop. <laughs> All right, yeah. now we are going to slide our bead on here and you could put other beads on here too if you wanted it to be longer. I really wanted this project to be about like six inches ish um, so that it really could fit anyone as a bracelet or as the choker or whatever. Um, how was I going to finish that sentence? <laughs> <laughs> you, it's, you, you can really alter it however you want, but uh, if you do it this way, it'll be about, um, about six inches, I think. Yeah. A little over six inches. So I just, I, I was like, what size would be the best like for everyone? So, if you wanted to add like an extender chain or anything, like it would it would be perfect for lots of different wrist sizes. Okay, now we are going to put the crimp on the other side. And again, through 
both together. I like how it, the silver crimp like grabs some of the color from the crystals in this. All right. And let's grab my crimp. Okay. And switch it. This is a great project also to practice <laughs> You're using the map. I know uh, it takes a little while to get used to these magical crimpers if you do decide to use them. Um, it's great to practice them in areas where the strength of the project does not rely solely on that crimp. Um, like this is really more of a kind of like a placeholder. So like if your crimp wasn't perfect, like it wouldn't nothing would fall apart. It's really just to keep keep everything how we want it. Okay, now we're going to go and get our other clover. Just the clover this time. And come through both sides like we've been doing. All right. And you want to kind of like pull this a little slowly so you don't have to fidget with it so much. Um, we're just trying to get it even like the other side. Almost there. Okay. So we got that. Just a little, there we go. Go. And then we're just going to do what we did before, um, but we're going to go down in size. So we're going to start with the eight. One, two, three. Okay, do the other side. I was really excited about these um, these saucers because you. I feel like usually when you when you get a bead like this, um, where it's like Preciosa or the or um, I'm not sure what what maker of the saucers are. Um, but I feel like we got so many of them and I feel like you don't usually get this many of them. So you can go like glitter crazy. I feel like usually you could go like glitter little crazy, but now I can just be like, I'm like, <laughs> if I want to use all of these, I can. You can go glitter mega crazy. <laughs> yeah, just sparkle all the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if a man didn't also live here, things would be painted sparkle, trust me. <laughs> and people ask me what my favorite color is, and my answer oftentimes is glitter or leopard. I love glitter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we're going to do seven. Two, three. Other side. It would be so easy to like use this design to make a bunch of different. It it would completely change depending on what beads you use. So it would be fun for this to be like a signature piece that you could switch out. Like switch out the center one. Oh yeah. So like if you if you made another um if you made another one with like different beads say if you have like leftover or like after um 
after you've used all the beads from your kit and you're like, wow, I really like that design. I want to make it again. And you made like another one, but it was completely different. And then you could just switch your ribbon from design to design. And that, like, I think I'm, I'm echoing the sentiments of everybody watching right now, Rachel, this design is so cool. It's like, it's versatile. It's fun. It comes together like quick and easy. And like, you're just saying, you know, you can, you're doing it with these beads here right now, but if you did it with some other style beads, it would have a completely different look. Yeah, absolutely. I love doing, um, doing projects like that where once you got the technique, like it, it's really applicable to so many different things. I feel like a lot of things in, in jewelry making are like that. I have, um, I was teaching a lot of classes throughout the, um, the pandemic and um i'm sure you guys were too um but it was just so fun seeing like i i love to come up with different techniques and it was fun seeing where people took them um the ways they combine them into different different projects so i was like wow i wouldn't have even thought of that like Yeah, beating over the pandemic, like that, that's where all of this online broadcasting really took off, and it's it's the sparkliest, most glitterati filled silver lining that we could have had from the pandemic was to be it's, able to really yeah. make all the education online and hanging it's, out. It, it's been such a, a blessing because I feel like if if you looked for beating YouTube videos before the pandemic, like there there were some there, but there were not as many, and like since everyone was making them then everyone was like thinking about like well i need to make this the best quality video because everyone's going to be <laughs> everyone's going to be seeing all these other ones so like we, we want it to be the best quality so they pick our video so now mm -hmm. we have these like amazing beading tutorials whereas like if you look at ones from like 10 years ago it's kind of hard to see um <laughs> all right so we are on our last loop then this is the five bead one or the five on each side so ten i still have so many of these crystals left over too they are they're the gift that keeps on giving i love that look at how many i still have so many left i put them in this little jar because i have a tendency to fling things across the bead mat um <laughs> now we are <laughs> i <laughs> You laughing in solidarity? Um. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know that every other person in the comments is like, "Oh yeah, that's never happened to me." <laughs> Small beads just have a tendency to that they like to be airborne, you know. Well, we don't really vacuum the area over by my desk. I kind of just, um, I kind of like sweep it with my hands so I can pick the beads. <laughs> Oh, and let me talk about what I'm doing right now. So um, instead of a clover on the end, because we've used all our clovers and we're getting up to the end of the project. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, this is the trickiest part, but it's really not that tricky. You, you'll be okay. Um, and so I've got my crimp on where we would have a clover and then we're going to come back through it the same way we would for the clover. And... Now what we're gonna do different is we're gonna take one of these wires and we're gonna go back through again. And you might have to fiddle with it. The um, magical crimpers, uh, I think Sarah has said before, Sarah Ayler, that you could do up to three strands and I have found that to be true. I think I have tried to put more strands through there before as well. But <laughs> Definitely, uh, you can do three. So we've got three strands going through right now. I'm just taking this so they can be relatively the same size on each side, like I was saying. Um, and what's nice about three strands is also like there's so many in there that it's kind of holding its its place. I don't have to worry about it slipping around. Okay, just all right, perfect kind of come in here with my magical crimpers again. You have to be really careful not to get any of your saucers when you're doing this part. But luckily they are larger than seed beads. So you don't have to, <laughs> they don't sneak into the crimping plier as easily. 
I broke some seed beads when I was crimping yesterday and I was quite annoyed. I feel like they just sneak under your feet like cats. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this one's a little bit trickier because you don't have as much mobility, but it's still going great. Then when we're done with this, we're gonna come in here with some flush cutters and snip the edges flush. Okay. And these little pieces are still like a good size if you wanted to do earrings or something with them. Yeah, that's a quick question actually. Um, let's see here. How much wire did you start with, Rachel, or did you just kind of eyeball it? I started with um, 30 inches. You, I would say when I first, when I did the first one, I actually, it's funny. I was like, I want to have like a lot of extra wire. So I was like thinking, you know, usually you do double the size of whatever you're making so that that's how long you'll have for the wire. And that I was like, I want so much extra. So I'm going to cut four times the size I want the end piece to be. And it ended up being like barely enough. Um, mm -hmm. So like 24 inches is like, it's pretty tight on this one. So if you're not like super confident in your, your centering and stringing skills, I would definitely do more. The 30 inches was great for this. And we had this much left over, um, which is a great size piece for another project. You could totally do a little pair of drop earrings. Love that. That's so cute. Um, and then, so what I loved about doing the loops on the end is you can really finish it however you want. So I chose to finish it with our beautiful ribbon and you could do it as a headband, a choker, a wrap bracelet. Um, but you could also like, if you wanted to like, get a jump ring and just pop a clasp on this and call it a day. Um, <laughs> it's totally up to you. So this is how I threaded it through. And I liked it like this because then I could do it myself. So just tighten it. And then you can wrap your, your ribbon around your wrist and tie it if you want. I love that. I love wrap bracelets. So pretty. Oh, you could even just like tie it in the back and let the ribbons kind of fall down like this. Yes. That's you you could tie it up top too if you wanted and um, have like a bow up there or a knot, whatever you can do one handed. I did manage a bow one handed the other day. I don't, I don't know if I'll be lucky enough to do that today. <laughs> but you want to make sure that your strings are going in opposite directions, which I did not do. So that way you'll be able to meet them up to tie them easier. Did I just do the same thing again? Yes, I did. Wow, it looks so pretty on your wrist. I love the um, the color of the crystals and how neat it is that you can put the different color of wire underneath it and have a completely- oh, Yeah, it's totally different. Wow, it's beautiful. I love that. I love them together too. Awesome. Uh, I'm like very curious about the, the headband thing that um, Kristen mentioned earlier, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that <laughs> right now. Super cute. Love headbands. Yeah, here we go. Love it. You could also totally, um, if you aren't able to do a bow or whatever, because of of the faceting on the um, on the saucers, if you slip the tail ends of your silk through here, and you kind of wrap it around, it'll it'll keep it in place, like one of those like little buckle belts where you you slip it through. So like that's not gonna go anywhere. That's so pretty too. Um, so that's a little bit easier than tying a bow. Just, I love the versatility of anything you can wrap. 
because you can really you can really make it your own. Come on now. So a little birdie told me that there might be so many so many earring possibilities in the kit that we might want to make some ear wires too. I don't know if that's something we'd be interested in. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always, I'm a big fan of earrings and anything that has, I was about to say anything that has the word ear in it, but that sounds kind of weird. So, <laughs> <laughs> but earring, well, anything. Now I'm trying to think of what space. else has the word ear in it. Um. <laughs> earring, ear wire, ear lobe. I don't know. <laughs> Earrings, yes. Less and more, yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. So um, we thought it'd be fun to just really quickly show you how you can make your own ear wires if you do end up needing more. Um, I feel like I can never have enough ear wires. So what I am grabbing right now is I am grabbing some 20 gauge wire. Um, this is Softflex craft wire. If you have access to um, like half hard wire, that is what I usually use, but you can also work hard in your wire. So I'm gonna show you just how I would make, ooh, let's do a fun, ooh, let's do a fun one with one. Will this fit on there? I'll ooh. show you how to do one with one of the saucers. Let me see. Yes. Okay. 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 I know what we're going to do. Oh, we're excited. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my flush cutters and I am going to cut the end flush. And then I'm going to cut two pieces of wire. I like to use two and a quarter inches. Um, again, with everything in jewelry making, I feel like better have more than enough than not enough. Um, but I feel like two and a quarter inches is usually a pretty good amount. When I cut the second one, I'm actually going to use the first one to cut it with. Because then if I didn't do a great job doing it exact, they'll at least be the same length. So at this point, I would work hard on the wire. I'm just trying to see where my... Oh, we got hammers everywhere. This is not the right hammer. So usually I'd use an nylon hammer. <laughs> I'm not sure where that went. Here it is. Nope, that's not it either. All right. So you can also, um, I know, I think I think Softflex has like bead whackers. You can like whack them together. Um, you can also take a metal hammer and like really lightly work hard in it if you want. This will flatten it though, so I just do it very lightly. What's nice about um, if you use brass for this, especially brass is naturally like just a lot more um, stiff. So it holds up really nice if you're new to making ear wires. And this is the gold plated from Softbox. Okay. I'm going to pretend like I hammered that for a while. <laughs> And then we're gonna come in with our round nose pliers. And I usually give it about, oh, it's probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more. Yeah, three, three eighths. And we're gonna just make our loop. Okay, and we're gonna do the other one. All right, and then, then we're gonna slide on our little saucer. You could even do like a couple of these if you wanna, but that would be kind of long. Um, so I've got my saucer. I'm gonna come in with my, you could use your chain nose pliers or your flat nose pliers for this next part. It's important to do the next part kind of delicately because you don't wanna crack your bead. So I'm gonna find where, where the bead and where the bead kind of like ends and I'll put my plier there and then I'll get it a little bit of extra space. And we're going to hold it and we're going to very lightly just twist it. And we're doing it like very lightly because I don't, 
I don't want to crack the beads. So once you've got it twisted enough to where you feel like you might crack the bead, you're going to just inch your pliers up a little bit. You're going to keep going so that you get that nice 90 degree angle. So we'll do it again. I used to like put my fingernail here and like bend it, but I found this is, <laughs> this works a lot better and doesn't uh, crack my fingernails. Um, and let's see, so we're gonna get right down up by the bead, give it a little space, bend till you're concerned, move up, bend more. Okay. And then we're gonna come in, so you can either use, you could use bail making pliers, you could use a pen, you could use one of these things, if you have one of these things, we're gonna, we're gonna use this. I don't know what this is called. A mandrel. It's a nice looking mandrel. That's that's a great word for it. Yeah, I've had this thing for so long. I forgot mm -hmm. to even tell you what brand it is. So I'm just wrapping my um, ear wire around that, putting this right up against. I might have to fix that loop in the bottom, but and I like to kind of like overlap a little bit which you can, you can stretch out, but I find that that makes it the easiest to have them be the same shape. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just fix my loop a little bit. Okay. And boom, stretch it out. It'll look a little bit better with properly work hardened wire also. So this is what we've got right now. And then I like to take these pliers and go right up against the end and flip it out. Let's do the other one. So we're coming back around the mandrel again. So it's funny, I feel like when I um, when I haven't bought tools in a while, I forget what they're called, because I already have them. So I don't have to look for them. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not talking for them. My brain does not need to remember what this is called anymore. So I love when you have a tool also that's just like that that's like your tool. You're not going to replace it. Like if it were to break, you would be sad because it's like right. been in their stash for a long time. Okay. Let's see. I'm actually going to put these in the bail making pliers just to make them. Okay. So the shape would be a little bit better if I had work hardened it more. <laughs> okay. There we go. Super so work is important though, because um, it, if, if you're selling them or you're giving them to someone like you really don't want them to be able to but you want them to go well, put this in their ear without completely distorting it so don't skip the work hardening step step um and then you're gonna want to get a piece of sandpaper or a file i usually have a nail file in here i'm like here what fire was that rachel is it 20 gauge did you say it's 20 gauge yeah um 22 gauge I found unless you have unless you bought the wire pre hardened 22 gauge is just like too difficult for me to properly work harden um and it also just like is a little flimsy a lot of the ones that you'll buy pre-made are more like 22 gauge um or like 21 gauge but the wire is so much harder so if you want to do a smaller gauge I would buy pre pre work hardened wire personally um, and then you just want to sand the file the ends so that it's not sharp. It won't cut anyone's ear, but you can totally use a regular nail file like I'm using for this. Um, so handy to know because I know there's tools out there and, and like, I mean, I, I know we all love having tools, like, but if you put right. tool at your disposal, knowing that you can just get an emery board out and smooth it. And right. You do have to replace it more often than you do um, if you were using it just for your nails, but <laughs> it is on wire. But I usually use like a little file also. Um, but honestly, this works just as well. I have a file here. Um, I actually left one of my fi the file I like to use at my friend's house, and I don't think I'll ever see it again. So. <laughs> So we've been using we we've, we've been getting a lot of use out of this emery board. Um, but yeah, so then you have your own little ear wires. They would they would match this if you wanted this to be a ginormous earring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but I love to do that. I love the, the, this is just like the artisan touch is adding that other little bead right there. And then it just, the, the ear wire doesn't look like, oh, you just threw an ear wire on. Oh no, this ear wire was made for this earring. I love that. This was a great class, Rachel. Thanks, Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Um, I think I'll and flip around back to me, if that's okay. Yeah, come on over. <laughs> Okay, wait, let me put my hat back on. Um, this is such a fun day to be able to hang out. And I was just saying this to Rachel and Kristen before um, we got going that like, this is this hang session for for myself personally, with you, Rachel has been really great because we haven't really gotten to do this before. I know that you've been involved with Softlex and Jesse James Beads parties. Um, but I think the last one was over Halloween, correct? Yes. And I was mm -hmm. on my honeymoon. So it was just really nice to be able to spend this time and create and just hang out. Yeah, it was great getting to create with you. I love Yay. them. Um, I'm excited to try this project out. Um, I do myself love like door knocker earrings. So maybe mine will turn into like just a really long pair of. <laughs> yeah, I, I love huge earrings. That's like one of my favorite things. Not afraid. <laughs> These are these are small for me today, but I was like, I need I need something that's like on Galentine's trend. So yeah, I was like, okay, okay, we got to put those those opal hearts on that you made. <laughs> Pretty. Oh my gosh! Yes, I think I saw something. Did you, did you just post those recently? Oh, they're beautiful. Yes, I had everyone try to help me decide what was gonna go in the center. I think the red is it garnet in the middle. It's a ruby. Oh, special, very Valentine'sy indeed. That's awesome. Wow. And Rachel, tell everyone that's watching from Jesse James Beads and Softlex, where can we hang out with Rachel more? Like where can we get inspired by your designs? What's your what's your Instagram handle handle? Like where where are you hanging out online? I'm like very bad about updating things, but you can find me um my YouTube and my Instagram and my TikTok are all Mally Jewelry. Um I have a, and I'll be saving this as well. I have a playlist on my YouTube. So I don't really have any of my own YouTube videos. I like, I, have, I do a lot with other people. So um, I have a whole playlist I put together on YouTube of um, classes I've done with others. Um, so I did, I've done a lot of classes with my friend, Sam. Yes. Sorry, I'm a little shake. Don't get dizzy, anyone. Um, <laughs> um, I've done a lot of classes with my friend, Sam. I've done a couple with Softlex. I got to do... Ooh, I don't know if I put that on there. A couple of years ago, I got to do like the Beetle on um, challenge thing. Oh, I love those. That was fun. Um, <laughs> everyone's talking the whole time, and I'm just like I'm very competitive. I'm like, I'm going to finish. <laughs> I love that. I think that just adds to it, like the designers that are like really focused. And that's one of the reasons why, like, I personally never like to make jewelry on camera because my face like twists up into this like question mark concentration. <laughs> but you got, you did it. Like, sitting here restringing the same thing eight times. Um, <laughs> but, um, other than that, you can also find me on Facebook. Um, if you make anything based off of the design, I'm about to say you can tag me. I'm pretty sure I'm in both your group and Softlex's group. Um, or you can friend me. I accept all friend requests, much Yay. to uh, every security person's dismay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, they like jewelry making. I like jewelry making. Let's be pals. Yeah. Happy Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of pals, we've got another pal here in the green room in the waiting area. I'm going to add on here, Miss Jennifer Miller. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. We'll add in. I think Jennifer. my mic is on my on my uh, phone. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, that's all right. We'll get that demo camera in there anyway. Jen, welcome. Welcome. We just had a great class with Rachel. This has been yes. a really fun first hour. Mm -hmm. Of course. Way to go, Rachel. Um, I'm excited. I actually, but I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen anybody else's finished projects. So I'm excited to see what everyone, I'm excited to see what you're going to do today. My, mine's changed. Um, I think we're on the 18th 
different round of what I'm actually going to be using it for. Cause I get in and it's like, Ooh, well, I kind of like this. And then our granddaughter, she's three, almost four was like, well, Gamma, what about this? And I'm like, oh yes. Okay. That's what it is. So yeah. I think it's like really important to talk, to talk about that kind of stuff because I've, mm -hmm. I've had so many people say to me like, oh, I can't do it like you. Like it takes me so long. And I'm like, you didn't see the 18 times I strung this. <laughs> you didn't see the basket of wire scraps I have sitting next to yeah. me of the same loop 20 times. Like <laughs> yeah. you're, you're seeing the end. <laughs> right. So I think right. it's really great to talk about that. So everyone mm -hmm. knows like there's an artistic process for everyone. Right. There is. It is nothing what I thought it was going to be. And so I'm just super excited. And last night I was kind of putting it up to my neck and I thought, this is it. This is it. I love it. Can't wait to wear it on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Yay. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks, Rachel, for, for Thanks chiming so much in. for having me. Thanks. Yeah, this is a great class and, and all the, the helpful tips that you've provided and, and the beautiful project. This is just really great. Have fun, everyone. I can't wait to see what everyone makes. Bye, Bye. Rachel. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Oh, this is so fun. You know what? We um we are getting into hour number two of our four hour jewelry making marathon for Valentine's Day, and we have got the awesome Jennifer Miller here coming up after the fabulous. Rachel Malice. Jennifer, you're here. It's good to see you. You look beautiful. I love your mat. Like, how the heck are you doing today? We are doing perfect. I can't complain. We have four hours, four designers, and it's Valentine's Day. Happy yeah. Valentine's Day, Sarah. Happy Valentine's Day, Jennifer. Oh, how wonderful. This is like, this is like some real binge worthy jewelry making TV, if I do say so myself. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. I love it. So, Jennifer, what um, what are we working on today? I know that I've seen some beautiful orange beads. We had chosen, just as a little bit of background, um, before I turn it over to Jennifer, we had chosen these colors that are in the Galentine's Day kit, the Galentine's Day bead kit that is actually still available over at jessiejamesbeads.com. Get the beads there and the supplies, the crimp beads and all the wire and those beauty parts from softlexcompany.com. The beads that we chose for this were purple for friendship, pink for love, clear for peace, and orange for creativity. And I see that, Jennifer, you've got a lot of orange creativity and just creativity on your mat right here. That's right. I chose the Chunkamunk. I had to get the Chunkamunk. I love the Chunkamunk crystal ball. It's just it's awesome. It's amazing. I love it. It's so pretty and sparkly. And uh, just like I said, I had a couple of different mm. designs of what I was going to do. And this is completely different. So and then also, too, you'll see that I have a little bit of a show here on one side and a little different on another side. So I have a couple of different ways you can do it however you want to i like to expose wire so of course i'm going to have an exposed wire side because i love exposing the yeah. gorgeous soft flex wire absolutely yeah and you know what we were just talking about in jennifer's or, i mean i'm sorry in rachel's class just before yours jen is we were seeing how that soft flex wire really plays such an instrumental role in the the whole total vibe of the piece so yep. the beads, if the Jesse James beads you're using are translucent and you string a the white soft flex wire, it has a completely different look mm -hmm. than it does from stringing the garnet or the pink tourmaline. And yeah. you're going to find that, guys. Like all of our gal pals in the audience, all of our gal pals, our guy friends, like everyone that's watching, you're going to be able to see that you can choose the soft flex wire of your liking to be able to have that piece have the color vibration of your choice. And I see that Jennifer's mm -hmm. doing that already right here. Yes, I took the, I'm using the garnet and then I have the orange strand and I'm yes. also bringing in the pink daisy Yay. chain. So we're going to, we're going to layer it up and I love it. I absolutely love it. I've, like I said, I'm going to be finishing this today because I'm going to be wearing it tonight. So I just can't wait for us to dive in. 
Do you have plans with your gal pals tonight, Jennifer, for Galentine's Day? You just go wear it and just wear it and be happy that you had your gal pal time today. I'm going to wear it while watching Rachel's and the other two designers because I'll have to watch them on replay. But Yay. I'll be it and I'll be rooting them on, even though it's not live, it'll be replay and I'll still be doing it. It's good. I, I love that. And I'm like totally for like when I get dressed in the morning, like I feel like I'm not fully dressed unless I have earrings in, for example. <laughs> So it's like when you make your jewelry, you put the jewelry on, even if you are going nowhere. If you're snowed in, if you're drinking tea, put some jewelry on. You feel like, I don't know, I just, I feel better for myself. Complete. Family. You're complete. So my yes. mom would always say before she passed away, she'd say, never leave the house without rouge or mascara. Don't do it. Don't leave the house without those two items. My mama, which is her mom, said, don't leave the house without rouge or dipstick. And she called it dipstick, lipstick. And so here in the jewelry world, we're like, don't leave the house without a piece of jewelry on. Yeah. Get your jewelry out. Make yourself feel better. You'll feel, you'll feel nicer when you have a piece of jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's get down to some jewelry making. Jennifer, you okay. feel ready? We are going to spotlight to Jen's hand cam and let's get into it. Let me pull this just a little bit down. Okay, so what we're going to be using today is we're going to be using the garnet. However, though, based on other designs, I believe any of the other three would work as well. Uh, I just chose the garnet just because I love red, and I thought red and orange looked really, really good together. I mean, look, I have orange and hot pink here, and I just absolutely love it. So I decided on the garnet. We're also going to be using some little white beads and I took out four and I'm really only going to use three. I changed my design up a little bit. And so we're going to use three of the little white rondelles. It's these here. And these were on the bead strand, the white, this one here with all the hearts. Oh, and yes, and that's all you're going to need unless you want to add some bling. I also saved up a crystal rondelle and then also a couple of bead caps too. So if you want to change things up, because I played around with putting bead caps on the end and that type of thing, but I ended up going with adding the three. We're also going to be using some of these orange beads. We'll put the chain off to the side. And what I did with the chain was I cut off five links and with the chain there's no jumping in between so you have to cut you have to actually ruin one of your links by cutting it however you don't have to ruin it all you have to do is when you cut then take a file file it down and now you have a nice little dainty charm how's about that Okay, so this is probably about 16 and a half inches. And let's go ahead and get these guys all off so I can show you what we're going to do. I wanted to give you a little bit of a preview first. Oh, and then that'll be the test is if I can get everything on here live. Because this was a like you have to have your tongue going a certain way in order to get it all to go through. So... Let me go ahead and take that off and we'll go through this exactly how I put it together. And maybe I'll just leave that tucked in there. Okay, so I have about, I think one of them is 22 inches and the other is 20 that I just dropped of the garnet. Okay, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna use one and if you want to just have a single strand, um, and how, actually, when you look at that, all you got to do is crimp it up and you've got yourself a gorgeous little simple necklace, right? That or, does not yeah, <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome? And then also, too, you can make, have a nice little, um, little review mirror dangle off of your review mirror in your car. Can you imagine that sparkling up against the sun? Wow. All right. So what I did was I just selected an area and I poked my wire through one open end and out another. Okay. And then I ended up just kind of pulling and resting it in between a few little beads there. 
So let's see if we can do it live. I really, I cannot believe I just did that, but <laughs> just go ahead and poke that through. Oh, it worked first time. And if you're having trouble, just go ahead and grab your chain nose pliers. And if they're small, you can kind of get in there a little bit and grab those or a pair of tweezers. Also, if you don't want it to dangle just off of one, pass it through a few and it gives it a whole different look. So I'm just gonna go through one and then I'm gonna bring it to the middle. Okay, bring it to the middle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and look at the size of the holes of your beads that you're gonna be using and just make sure that one of them has a large hole and these all pretty much have the same size hole. So I'm gonna put two on one side. I'm gonna put one on the other. Okay, just like that. Then with the two, I'm gonna take one of them, right? And I'm going to pass back through. When you pass back through, just go ahead and get that pulled. Let's try to make it sure that it's at least a little bit halfway and it pretty much is. And then just go ahead and pull. And I just pulled until it just kind of rested right in between there. Okay, is everybody, everybody with me? And again, you can manipulate things around however you wish. I want the wire to show if that, isn't for everybody, you can go ahead and use the white so, um, soft flex and do the same thing. And the white wire will just get absorbed. Then to get your second strand, if you want a second strand, so you can easily just start stringing up your beads. And you can just start stringing them up. And if you just want a single strand, this strand of orange beads, thank you, Sarah and Jesse James beads, is so long that you can make your entire necklace on it. It's, is it 18 inches or more? It's pretty long. It It is long. And I am not sure how long it is, but it is a lot. And you can see it right there on Jen's, on Jen's mat. You get a lot of these. We, we at Jesse James beads have been, um, you know, we're known for our bead mixes and our mixed bead strands. Mm -hmm. But we're like, you need like some really fun, like flashy, but like flashy yet filler yet flashy beads. Yeah. Um, so we're starting to bring on really cool glass elements, crystal elements to support yeah. our mixes. And that's that's what this strand is here for this whole. Well, camp. You guys, your first at bat, if that's where you're going for, you just hit a home run because these are amazing. And I love to finish on these. And they're flat, you know, they're flat, they're square, but then they're flat, which makes adding another wire so perfect because then they can spin, they can do whatever. Yeah. Now, to, if you want to add the second one, which that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, and this one is the longer. So this one's probably 22 inches and this one's 20. And I'm going to go ahead and take one end and pass it through that top bead. And that's why it's important to have a bead that will fit all three strands and no problemo here. And go ahead and just pass that through, okay? Then with your first beads, you can either have both strands going through that first bead or having the in and out, the any outy. We're gonna go any outy right next to it because it just, I don't know, I think it just brings in that, the color of the beads and the, and the, strand as well. So then I have these already on there, but I'm going to go ahead and in that second bead, I'm going to add my second strand. And sometimes it can be a little challenging, but the ones that I used, what I used about a dozen, none of them gave me any trouble. Okay. And then, so just bring it all down. And, and then also too, because you're doing the every other you don't have to do every other, you can do, you can do, um, you can have it where it's going in and out of each, of each bead. So if you wanted to just pass one through here 
or go through two beads. So if you wanted to have two beads where both strands are going through or two or two beads where one the outside strand is showing, you can do that. That's what's so flexible about this design is you can really make it whatever you want it to be. And again, I really love exposing. I think every single event that I've done with Softflex, I've done this exposed wire look. And I uh, I just, I love it. Can't go wrong with it, right? It looks so pretty. And, you know, I know we were talking about off camera, all the gals here that are part of the Galentine's Day jewelry making event, this party that y'all are watching right now off camera we had a great email thread going back and forth like gassing each other up like saying yeah you use those beads it's gonna look so cool really a lovely supportive email thread and jennifer said i think i'm gonna use the garnet wire with the orange beads and i don't know if it was sarah or kristen from softflex they were like oh yes like garnet looks so good that red wire looks so good with orange and i mean we can see it plain as day right now it's so sharp yeah, it's, it just, I love it. I love having the pop of white. That mm. pop of white just did, I don't know, it just did something. And I just thought, wow, because the white initially, so in my first design, I was just going to pass through the middle mm. and then add the white and then put another speck of white somewhere in the design. But then I thought, I'm not showing any of this gorgeous wire. I have to show the wire. So we're going to go ahead and continue. That was one strand and then we're going to go two strands and then one so this is just this is probably boring for everybody to watch but you'll just keep on going until you get to your desired length i guess we can chit chat yeah we should drink i wasn't at rachel's live except for the end it was, it was good. I saw the ear wires. Yeah. It, you know, that's, that's, what's great about these events. You know, like we have the project that our designers are planning on making, but we, we we have a schedule here. So we're going, you know, hour by hour with each designer. So if there's time at the end of the hour, then the, our designers are whipping out something on the fly, like, like total bonus material. And that's, that's where you came in on. Jennifer was our bonus ear wires the bonus ear wires i love it so okay. now I'm yeah I like any, anything um, anything that has to do with earrings i'm always a fan of so anytime our designers get to add on a pair of earrings in addition to the jewelry piece they're they're making i i personally am never mad about it <laughs> so it's funny you say the earrings because i have a pair of earrings to send you Oh my gosh, I love that. Yes, made with your Aspen wet wedding pack. Oh my gosh, you were telling me about this. I can't wait to see that. Yes, I have to get it all in the mail. Okay, so my, my mat here is about eight inches wide. It's not very big. I did find a clean one. I couldn't believe it. My other one's starting to get kind of dingy, and I thought, eh. Um, if JJB had a bead mat on their website, we could go grab one. All if, of us. <laughs> if they did, you know what? And I actually have bead mats with our with Jesse James Beads logo on them that I am meaning to send you, Jennifer, and a couple other, a couple. Of, <laughs> they were intent to be to be Christmas gifts, and they got sent to our warehouse here. And um, you know, things just got a little busy. And I said to my friend, I said to Kelly, Kelly, what are these? Jesse, she was Matt's doing here. She's like, oh, we didn't get to send them out yet. I'm like, well, we're gonna, everyone's going to be getting a spring gift. We're going to have like a yeah. spring, spring cleaning. Out with your old mat, in with your new one. <laughs> and I'll have one with your name on it, Jennifer. Ah, uh, yeah, because mine never covers. And then I start moving. And then I'm off-centered. And it's like, if I just had a nice, you know, a normal size mat, I wouldn't be doing that. I would, I, I, you would never see when I'm off center. Do you know okay. what? How handy though for your mat to be eight inches long and for Jen to just go say, to say like, okay, I know that my, I know my necklace is this long because I've just yep. met. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And I have another yeah. mat and I actually put different, look what I did. I put measurements on it. <laughs> Smart cookie here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Doing here today at Galentine's Day. That's right. So here's what we have. And I I just love 
that look and you can actually you might have enough beads to make a little bracelet afterwards too because like I said, my little three, almost four-year-old granddaughter, she chose these beads and said, Grandma, can you make me a bracelet? And so I thought, all right, yep, we'll make you one. So I have about, so this is probably, maybe let's do one more set so that I can get to be about, well, let's see, where's the middle? Let's go here. Yeah, let's just do one more little set. And what I'm going to do is before I do any of the crimping, I am going to add one side of that chain, that daisy chain. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the ends of the daisy chain. So on one end, you have a, a little, like a little hole, like a little connector right here right there. On the other side, you have the other side connection. So yeah, when, those holes on the chain are kind of like, um, they're like rosary style. Links. Yeah. And so what I want to do is I want to connect this to my, to my necklace here. I don't know if I can get both strands through. Let's see if we can get both strands through. No, problem here. All right. Nice. Okay. So there we go. So we're going to have this and it's just, and if you want to, you can actually make this a whole separate necklace if you want to just add a jump ring and uh, make it that way. But I'm, mine's all going to be connected because that's what I'm going to do. All right. Now I'm going to grab one of the, how many crimp tubes? 50? Did she say 50? I, I think it's 50. I'm pretty solid. It's 50 crimp tubes. And that's wow. Yeah. Thank uh -huh. you, Softlex, for being so generous. Well, because you also, you have enough wire to do some other projects, mm. too, after they're all done. Because if there's any leftover beads, just make a little smorgasbord, whether it be a, whether it be a sun catcher, whether it be a pair of earrings, whether anything, and you've got yourself some stash. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I put the crimp tube on both strands. Then I'm going to bring, bring just one strand all the way through, sort of ish. And I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lobster clasp on this one so I don't forget on the other side. There's another little tip. If something's going directly to your piece, try and have that be the first one that you do. Then I'm going to pass just one. I'm only passing one through. And I want enough room for my lobster clasp to move around. Then guess what I'm gonna bring out? Yes, I'm busting out my magical crimpers because I love these, mm -hmm. they are amazing. And with the magical crimper, if you nobody has seen them yet, they mm -hmm. are one well. So you have one little hole there, not the two. And you start out with the tube and you end up with a little ball. So it gives you a bead-like finish. I love these. They are amazing. All right. Then if also too, if you're having trouble with getting your, um, your magical crimpers to work, just practice. You can just practice. And sometimes what I have found is adding a third wire kind of beefs it up a little bit as far as what's stuffed inside. And I know that when I first started, I started and I used a third wire and yeah, sometimes I use two. I don't have to use three anymore. But what you want to do is you want to get that crimp tube right in the center of that one well and then give it a squeeze. And when you give it a squeeze, you should end up and it looks like I had success. It looks like we have a square. Then you're just going to flip it over on its side because I have massacred these crimp tubes before and then go ahead and crimp down and then I just start kind of going around the horn here and I just start twisting around until I feel no tension if you and you can actually too you can see whether your little wires move or not and you end up with a bead-like finish give it the tug test it's never going anywhere 
Now we're going to come in and use our cutters to cut off the excess. And remember I mentioned the three strands? Well, this is how I get a third strand. I get a third strand by saving all my little pieces. I don't like waste. It's I just don't like waste. And I will save these. And I saw, oh, might have been years ago, Sarah. I feel like there was a Softflex or JJB uh, video where all of these little pieces got thrown into like a um, like a Christmas ornament ball. And they closed it up and it was clear. And so you could see all the different colors and it was really cool. That's cute. That's fun. Okay. So that then a really nice gift to give somebody like if your friend is a jewelry maker, which I mean, I know we've all got jewelry maker friends here mm -hmm. on our Valentine's Day event. How cute would that be to save all your Softlex wire scraps or maybe like some JJBs? But I, I love the idea of the Softlex wire scrap and put it in a clear ornament. That's cute. Mm -hmm. Nice. Someone needs to gift that to Kristen Fagan and or Sarah Ayler next year for Christmas. You got a whole year to save your, your software. <laughs> okay. So now, so when we put this necklace on, can I show you what it's going to kind of look like? It's going to oh look like God. that. And isn't that cute? Yeah. Yes. I can't wait. Oh. I can't. So that's how we're going to work this side. And we're going to go ahead and on this side here, I started with it being out. So one strand is out, one strand is in. And I'm going to do that on this side as well. So we're going to go one out and then one in. Now, what I also, here's another tip, which I probably learned from someone watching this, is that none, nothing that I came up on, on my own is to stagger. Stagger your wires. And sometimes that makes it a little easier to get in a bead, especially if it's a little tight, because then what you can do is you take that other side and you just kind of form it around your, your uh, finger to give it a little bit of tension to where it pulls the wire to one side and you can very easily just grab that and put that on there. Again, though, with these beads, no problem. That's now, a very handy tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So we got to make sure we have 24. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I'm sorry, I'm counting for everybody. 14, that's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We'll see if we have enough. Two, four, six, eight. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23. Okay, we need one more. I try to count out prior to just because then I don't have to worry about going through a whole long um, strand. And then also, too, and then I won't forget. How, how many times have you just kept on stringing, 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 stringing? And you're like, oh, dang, I got to take that apart. But if you do this in advance, then you won't have that. Look how much we still have. Wowzers. Yes. So we still have eight, probably around 11 inches still. Amazing. Okay. I don't, I don't think so, Jennifer, because, well, oh yeah. Oh no, there's a lot of beads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm -mm, I don't think so. Count again. <laughs> you got two kids because you're a designer. <laughs> I'm like, no, wait, there's a, there's actually Quite, quite, quite a few beads here. Oh gosh, they're oh, so yeah. cool too. Oh. Aren't they gorgeous? That I love is my favorite finish. So, do, does everybody remember beads by the pound? Not even just beads by the dozen that you oh. can get at jessejamesbeads.com right now, but beads by the pound. Oh, they had the red. Oh, it was so gorgeous, and I love the red faceted beads with this beautiful finish. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I loved beads by the pound so much that I might have gotten six pounds. Oh my gosh, Maria. Maria is so, so sweet here. Maria says that she's getting so excited for her first kit to buy. And she says that she is hooked. Welcome to the beady side, Maria. We are here for the beads, yeah. sparkle, and the fun, and the friendship. Yes, glad you're here. 
as I'm just sitting here beating along. Who else? Who's beating along or who's just watching? I'm I curious. Like to to watch. Know. Raise your hand, show a hand, give a comment to say, I'm beating with you, Jen. So fun to have a nice stringing project that you can beat along. Like we do a lot of events at Jesse James beads. There's wire wrapping. There's seed beads. There's things like that 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 will that will pop up in um in you know summer camp or beads and blooms or what have you. And you really have to like pay attention to the video. And it's hard to yeah. be, you know, like you almost have to go back and watch it on replay so you can like start, stop, rewind, fast forward. But when we're doing a project like this, like nice, easy, breezy stringing, you can totally beat along with it. You can totally do like beat it with your gals, but at home, it's great. This is a gorgeous kit, beautiful kit. So Maria, if this is your first kit, you pretty much struck gold again. <laughs> I say that with every, I think with all of them. On my YouTube channel, when I'm doing your unboxings, I'm like, oh, this is my favorite magical mystery bead box. And then the next month, no, this one's my favorite. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this we're is my favorite bead strand. Magic Mystery Bead Box is so much fun. And Jennifer, Jennifer's got a great YouTube channel. If y'all are enjoying this like beautiful beading and just Jennifer, you're so relaxed, just fun to hang out with. <laughs> like if you guys are enjoying this right now, Jen, please tell us where can we watch Jennifer Miller outside of this Galentine's Day jewelry making party event? Well, you can watch me on my YouTube channel and I have, uh, I was just going to say, I have Galentine's. No, it is under Jennifer Miller, one N, one F. And you can find me there on Instagram. I am Bella Rain Jewelry, Bella Rain Jewelry Company. And Bella Rain, my granddaughter is Rain. And so that's how Bella Rain came apart, came about because my mom would always say, oh, my beautiful daughter, my beautiful daughter, talking about me. Then when I had a little granddaughter for her, she's like, oh, my beautiful granddaughter, my beautiful granddaughter. Well, unfortunately, she never got to meet Miss Rain. Mm -hmm. So we, I wanted something in the name to reflect my mom. And so her name was, is Rebecca. And so I thought of Becca Rain, right? And then I thought, no, my mom always said beautiful. And what's beautiful? Bella. So that's how Bella Rain was born. I love that story. That's beautiful. Okay. So now, now we're at the end. And this is where you can manipulate. So if you have your stuff all strung out like this, and that's what I was, I was making sure because I had an extra bead. So I must have not counted correctly in the four times that I counted. But you can, with this being like having the any and outie, you can really change your mind up even midway of how you want this to go. Because if you remember, we had that second strand that was added just to the top. So it's not going in and out of here to add any more I don't know, not length, but if you wanted to um, make things a little different, you have some room to do that. And I kind of like how that's all spaced out. It just, I don't know, I can't wait to put this on. Then, like I said, I cut this to length. And then what you can do is, I was trying to make it to where it wasn't going to be um, all twisted. I'm really weird that way. And sometimes you just can't avoid it, but we will try not to avoid it or try to avoid it being twisted. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just add that to the end there. And let's see if this will go through. It went through on the other side, maybe not on this side. So let, let's do that little trick where I am holding that down to try and get that in there. And if not, we can always trim the end. And also, too, my eyesight is not the best. And this is a little far away from me. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and that's I have, I have, let me show you. I keep a magnifying glass, too. Oh, candy. <laughs> that's it goes, all the tricks. <laughs> it goes, it does go through my, um, it sits on top of my little ring here. 
so I don't let's go ahead and cut it on an angle because I feel like that's a blunt blunt cut mm. so let's go ahead and cut it on the angle and try it that way guess what I think it worked by cutting it on the angle I think oh we're going we're going no we're not okay well okay it's still fine okay so there we go I went through both on this side but only one on this side and that's quite all right that's just the way it's going to be all right so let's but that's going to bother me let's turn it around a little bit is it do do things do certain things bother or is it just me being extra you know like with things being twisted or things being awkward I don't know oh Jennifer I think you're, you're preaching to the choir when when you're like when we're working with like <laughs> small parts you know what I mean when yeah. you work with small parts you're like very detail um focused so if something is like no one would ever notice it from like far away but you notice <sighs> it you're working with your hands and you, she's got her yeah. magnifier glass out for gosh sakes so like, that's, yeah that's tiny 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 things <laughs> yes absolutely and I will I will notice so now we're going to go ahead and pass that through now on this side is going to be our connector now if anybody notices that then oh man they're standing there's, oh, if anybody can notice that, then they're standing too close to you. If they're seeing something that's so fine like that, then they're standing too close to you. All right. So now I put on my two, my two strands, pass my two strands through. And this side is actually going to be the side that our lobster clasp is going to connect to. So it doesn't have to be too large. It could be probably the same as this side here. And I'm actually going to pick the smaller side just so then now I have a larger piece and um, I have an idea for that too. Okay, so let's just go ahead and pass that back through the crimp tube. And make sure everything's all even. Let's try and get it about the same. Oh, that's about the same there except for this. Let's pull it through just a little bit. And again, if it's not exact, it's okay ish ish. All right, so now I have that extra strand hanging out, just hanging out out there, waiting to be crimped on. And then this is going to be our connector. We're busting out the um, magical crimpers and go ahead and add our tube right into the middle. If you see it poking out on one side, then you're not in the middle. And it's going to be very funky. Trust me, I've done it before, actually several times. And then you have a little square. And you can see that the four corners, if you've done it right, you'll see the four corners are all pinched. Then turn it on its side and make sure you don't have any pieces hanging out. And then just go ahead and then start pushing around here. And just wait. You see how when I go to crimp down, it moves? That means my crimp tube is not ready. I still need to be crimping. And there we go. Now there's no tension. And there we have that bead-like finish. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. So now we're going to go ahead and come in. And we are going to trim that piece off. And yes, we will save it. I know it's only about three quarters of an inch, but that's okay. We're going to save it. It's going to be perfect for your Christmas ornament that you make for Kristen Fagan. For Kristen, yes. For yes. <laughs> and then I'm going to come in on the other side. And what I do is I just kind of pull on it to where my, my cutters are going as close down to that crimp tube as possible. And then I'm not... I'm not um, going to be crimp or cutting any of the other wires. I feel like it just kind of takes it away. So there you go. Wow. Gosh, it's so pretty. I love it. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, it's so cute. I love the double layer. Yeah, and it almost looks like triple strand because you have these kind of coming in and out. It just looks kind of tripled up. See that I do see yeah. that. That's neato. Isn't that neato? Kind of groovy. 
Yeah, <laughs> it is. It really is. I like it so much. Oh, Deb Floros is chiming and she says this project is amazing. It Yay! is. Yay! Hi, Deb. Yeah. So there you go. We have our necklace, which also means oh, we have time for another project. Do we? Please. We do. Yeah, yeah we do. Oh. Let's do it. Let's do it. Bonus okay. time, guys. It's the bonus. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> I do not sing. I cannot believe I just did that. <laughs> You're just with your gal. She's feeling free. <laughs> I am. Well, I'm so excited because, like I said, I didn't put this together first. I just did that very little bit that you guys saw. And I did not know if it would turn out or not. So part of this is like this wonderful surprise that it did turn out to be exactly what I had intended. And yeah, and I guess if it had not, I might have never disclosed it, but I'm kind of a self reporter. So I probably would have told on myself. All right. So there we have our necklace. What did I say? I said that we have enough for probably a bracelet, right? Yes. Also, guess what else we have still? We still have some chain links, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you do it. Because you're going to have to, you kind of waste every other one, which that's okay. But we saw a way to not waste every other one. So what I'm doing is this is the side that has the loop that is going front to back. So it's going front to back. And then down at the very bottom, there's the little, the other little like little loop or connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our cutter tool and we're going to go right up against the uh, right up against that little enamel flower petal and make sure that your other side moves so that you know you're not cutting on that and go ahead and just cut. Then do that on the other side, come over to the other side, make sure you're not, you know, make sure you have some wiggle. You see the wiggle over there and then cut. And there you go. Bring in your file. Bring in your little file and just file that down. Right? Okay, so file. So we filed that down. I will do better once I have my mag, you know, my magnifying glass and I can see. <laughs> so we have one there. So really you're not wasting any. I I misspoke when I said you would be wasting some. But so now you have a little charm for your bracelet, right? I still have four more. Well, guess what we can do? We can make a pair of earrings too. Wow, this is super I know. Cool. This is this is like this is this is the kit that never ends. <laughs> so the first timer again. Now you're gonna see all these little fun things. It's like the kit never ends. But now I have little cute little charms that all I have to do is just file down the little nubby that sticks out. I do this with the rhinestone chain. You know your guys' rhinestone, the crystal, it's round crystals and chain, and it came in gunmetal and silver. I oh, wow. and, and even rose gold, because I made some for your mojo last year. Oh, and wow. I would use that. I would cut them off and then file down the end so that you have something. So we have a couple of, we have a couple of charms for earrings. Then we're going to cut one more off for our bracelet. Okay. And you still have two more. So if you want to make two pairs of earrings or what you could do is make it a double drop like that. Very cute. Okay. So what we're going to do is guess what we have. We have scraps. Wow. Okay. We have scraps and we have 50 crimp tubes. Wow. So what, yeah. So what you can do is you can thread one of these through here. Okay. And you can simply just go ahead and pass your crimp tube through and make it just round, a round loop, right? 
and have, you can make one crimp tube down here and one crimp tube down here if you don't want it to move around. But also too, what you can do is you can add some beads. So if you wanna add some beads to the side, oops, he just fell off or she, I don't know. It's either he or she. <laughs> and you can add your beads and make your earring that way. But what we're gonna do is we are going to grab the longer piece. I'm going to pass that through like that. Then, and again, you can make these as long as you want. I can always grab more wire because there's plenty of wire. You get 40 feet of wire, 40 feet. Amazing. Oh yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a larger piece of wire and let's go here. So I'm going to grab, let's see here. Let's grab, these are probably just a hair short. So let's grab a little bit more. I have about, so it's eight. So it's probably about five inches, five and a half inches of wire and pass that back through again, like how I had done, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and bring a bead through. And if you have any other, oh, ha -ha, here we go. You guys ready for this? I had reserved the little crystal rondelles too. Crystal rondelle and another bead. Oh, we have matching earrings. Oh my goodness. These are so cute. I like, I love when we get to bonus round of these event projects because it's like our designers are designing more or less on the fly. And I feel like you guys are like your creative engines are like really going after just like teaching a project. And yeah. then the bonus project ends up like just as good as the first one, like sometimes even better. Like, look how cute those are. They I am, I am in love with these. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add our two crimps and you already have ear wires that Rachel showed you how to make. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, here I am saying I know about my own design. I'm not <laughs> fooling myself. I'm really not fooling myself, but these are really cute. I like these. It okay. seems really cute, but I like that you just said that you could use them with the ear wires that Rachel just taught us how to make. That's, yep. It's a gal pal collab. It is a gal pal collab for sure. Now, what you can do is you can push this down as much as you want. Oh, I thought I put it in there. Okay, so you can do that. And then I have another little trick. So, again, you can also, too, if you want, you can... Um, you can add another crimp tube down here because they're bead-like finishes, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm sorry if anybody's beading along. This is why yeah. watch thin bead. All right, I get you, Sarah. I get you. <laughs> let's go ahead and do that first. And what we're gonna do is, here's another little tricky trick because you're like, I never get the same size loop. Okay, well, the one thing too is if, yeah, people aren't going to notice unless it's drastic. However, though, grab your Sharpie, put that on there. And if that's how long you want your loop to be, just connect it. Just get it just like that, right? And there's your loop. There's your size that you want, okay? Then you want that third strand to go through because it just makes you feel better, right? It does, I don't know, it helped me when I was learning. Okay, so I have my strand, my third strand. Now I can come in with my magical crimper. Crimp down and then go around. And go around. And this just provides a stopper so that your beads are actually sitting on something. You don't have to do that. This is optional. Okay, so now we have our little bead-like finish there. Ooh, and you can actually 
have that little thing dangle down too and it can work in your design okay go ahead and do that and then now i have this other third piece sitting here and i'm okay with that because it can just be hidden in your beads so go ahead and pass through bead and oh i don't know if a third one will fit nah oh wait it did like butter wow okay so here we go here and i'm going to trim that just a hair so that it doesn't just a hair so that i can fit in that crystal rondelle okay you guys with me you see I where my that. vision is yes there then now you don't have anything to worry about about getting it the same you know to you know with your beads moving up and down and yeah kind of cool huh all right so now let's grab our crimp tube and and you'll see one side i didn't have to make one side exactly the same so you don't have to come down the middle when you're putting this little guy on and go ahead and come back around and you could pass it back through if you want I usually do for bracelets, but I'm okay with this not passing back through. Okay, so now let's get, where are my nails? I always have cuts in the middle of my nails from tug testing and doing stuff. All right, so now you have a nice size loop at the top. You can make that as large as you want. You're just gonna put your ear wire on there. Then go ahead and have everything in place. Everything looks good. Crimp down and go around you can get as close as you want to your bead we know that it would pass through a third time okay and i still feel some tension and there we go check that out let's go ahead and get this trimmed off i still have a little remnants on there just be very careful not to cut unintended wires, probably because I have 18 strands going through those beads. Okay, and then go ahead and, okay. And of course you would get it a little more tight than how I got it, but how's that? Looks great. So cute. Cute little earrings. I love it. And it really does match the necklace so perfectly. Yes. You see each other. There we go. Check that out. How's that? So pretty. Then when you are making your bracelet, just you still have two more charms, or you can have the long dangle with the the they're still connected and connected to one side of your bracelet mm. one of the ends i probably do it on the end where your clasp is so that you're not fighting it over on the connection part sure, or, that yes or you can make the sarah ayler jump ring the sarah ayler jump ring is show us Yes, this is like triple threat bonus. Awesome. This is awesome. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, and again, this is called the Sarah Ayler jump ring because I saw Sarah do this and it was amazing. It was life changing. All right. So we have our little tiny piece, right? Let me move all this other stuff. I don't, I don't know what everybody's seeing. And I'm, see how I get off my, my mat just starts. Oh, you're doing thing. right, Jennifer. It's, it's hard. <laughs> Everyone in the crowd, it's hard to stay on camera. It's hard to keep your fingers in the right place when you're, especially when you're doing it live. But Jennifer, you are just nailing it out of the park. Aww, nice. Thank you. <laughs> so I have one jump, or I have one jump ring. I have one crimp tube over on one side. And then I'm going to take this other end and pass it back through in the opposite direction. And of course my fingers are all in the way. So sorry, but 
you'll see it after I'm done. Well, yeah, after I pass it through. Okay, so see, they're kind of going like that. Okay, now what you do, oh, magical. And if you want a third strand, mm -hmm. just add a third strand in there. If not, you guys are gonna see what my two strand crimps look like, okay? Then you make it as, as large as you want. And the thing with these crimpers is that they, you can kind of guide it because you've got your little crimp tube in there and you can kind of guide it along. And then go ahead and give it a little squeeze, okay? And you have your four corners, okay? Then you just start going round and you keep going around and around and adjust and around and adjust and around. I think it's all done. Then it's not over guys. Here we go. Then you just give it a trim. Give it a trim. Wow. Look at that. See, now you have a dangle. Oh my gosh. So the Ayler O-ring. I love it. I love it. Yes. Oh, did someone say the Ayler O-ring? I did. <gasps> <Me. laughs> yes. Oh, wow. So there you go. You would just add that onto one side. You could have done that on the necklace as well. So you guys have learned how to make ear wires, jump rings, earrings, necklace, bracelet. And guess what? <laughs> the fun's not over. <laughs> You get two more designs. Real quick question from Maria. I like this one. Maria asks, do you have to connect it to the piece first? You, for your for your jump ring, you would have to connect it to the piece, correct? Yes. It's like, yes. It's like a soldered loop almost. Yes, it is. It is like a soldered loop. So yeah, you would connect it first. Because once it's once once you've done the the Ailer squeeze, you're done. It ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. So, <laughs> Floros has just joined us and she's shaking her head in the back. Like, no way, that crib's not. <laughs> and it just looks like a little bead on a jumper. It just has a little bit of, you know, a little texture. It's cute. She's cute. Aww. Is Deb going to come in? Yes, she is. Well, Jennifer, this was so cool. Like, my hat's off to you with this beautiful, beautiful project. And you just thank so you fun to watch and learn from. Thanks for all the bonus material too. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I loved it. My surprise and my excitement um, is always genuine. And I am really always this excited. Um, and I'm actually trying to contain myself. So, um, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no need to contain yourself. This is, this is, this is, this, if you're just tuning in, we are on our, we just finished our number two of our Galentine's jewelry making party with Jesse James Beads and Softlex Company. We are doing like marathon binge worthy jewelry making. We just learned from Rachel Malice. We just learned from Jennifer Miller. And right now I am going to welcome to our gal pal party, the amazing Deb Floros. Hi, Deb. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> Jennifer, those projects, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm putting mine on now and it's not going to come off. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Deb, thanks so much for coming to join us. I've been seeing you chitting and chatting over in the comments. Thanks for that too. We like, this is a day for us. Like this is a day for us gals to pal around and do something that we love and that's jewelry making. So I'm in love with today and Deb, I'm so happy to have you here right now. One, 100%, this is our day. And I hope that everybody else is enjoying the day making some things just sharing some time with friends um this is a this is a great event i love this thank you for having me yeah <laughs> you know i gotta say like jewelry making is jewelry making is really fun with friends and it's great that we can be afar from each other but still get to create with one another like i know that there's been so many beautiful friendships that have come out of the creative communities that we have online 
Jennifer, Deb, myself right here, like all of us have become friends through jewelry making. And I like that in itself is a blessing. It's just, yes. I'm glad to know you girls. Amen. 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 <laughs> all right. Well, Deb, you get to take it over and I cannot wait to see what you make with the beads. It's going to be amazing. I already know it. I already know it. I already know it. Jennifer, <laughs> so much. Thank you for sharing these great Thank projects you. and your incredible energy with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Softlex, for providing us with all the wire. It's amazing, all the crimp tubes and every all the little findings. And JJB, thank you for an, another amazing, amazing kit packed full of goodies. Thanks. And happy Valentine's Day, my gal pal. Bye. 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 <laughs> Yay. Well, Deb, you look fabulous. You look like a Cupid angel with your little hair. Does Deb just look great? She really does. <laughs> always, always, Deb loves jewelry design. And that is, <laughs> I couldn't think of a better fitting brand name that you have given yourself, Deb, than the one that you have. So Deb of Deb Loves Designs is here. Deb Floros, welcome. It's so great to hang out with you always. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is my favorite time of year. Um, I love Valentine's Day and Galentine's Day. Um, I've like my brand is about the love, um, even though I spell it a little bit different. <laughs> um, I, my brand is that way because I just I, I love making jewelry. I, I love beads and beading supplies. And so, yeah, the, the love this time of year is abundant. I enjoy it. You know, <laughs> and, uh, the love that you have for jewelry making and beads and just like our community, it's, I, I feel like the energy that you put out there helps us all to feel it even more. Like you're, you're present in our jewelry making groups, you're watching videos, you're commenting, you're like giving like kudos to people when they're, pro when they're, when they're sharing the pictures of their jewelry. Like Deb, you truly have such a lovely energy about you and you make all of us feel so good. Like you really spread the love that <laughs> Deb loves jewelry designs through our community. And I couldn't be more happy to have you as a friend and to be here with you right now. Oh, well, thank you. It's totally genuine. This is, you know, this is the life that I want to live, um, you know, kind of sharing what I do and, and seeing what everybody else does and just trying to be kind and loving. And, you know, that's something that I feel is really important. There's so much um, ick in the world. <laughs> and I feel like if I can do something to change that, I'm one person and maybe somebody else does it because they see it from me. And then we get rid of some of the ick in the world. <laughs> Real ripple effect. You know what I mean? We're we're dropping a sparkly stone into a pond here and the, the ripples are real. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like that. Oh, Deb, that is so great. And I'm like, you know, you always come up with really cool projects to teach. And they always have such a power to them. Like, um, so for everyone watching, we we have the 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 bead kit, the Valentine's Day bead kit from Jesse James Beads, the supply kit from Softlux. And all of us gals, of course, are like chatting in the background, planning for this event. It's like, okay, you guys got your beads, you guys got your supply kit. All right, who's gonna take one? Who's gonna take what? And Deb was the first one that said, I'm gonna take this bead from this strand. <laughs> this mix and I'm going to be do the, doing this. So I can't wait to see what this creative prowess is, has come up with for us to create today. Well, I hope I don't disappoint because it's a really, really simple project. But I think what struck me the most is just the beads themselves. So they are, everything that I chose is so luminous and mm. um, it just kind of epitomizes all of the parts that, that we've talked about. Um, you know, the love, the friendship, the creativity, all of that. Um, so all of this sparkle and brightness um, is really what speaks for itself. The projects are simple. So, um, I, you know, we're taking a little simple break here with my projects mm -hmm. and we're just going to enjoy the beads and all of the beautiful things we have to work with. I love that so <laughs> much. 
very much. And everyone, if you're enjoying the beads, you can grab this kit. There's a few more left, I think. There's a few more over at jessiejamesbeads.com. And you can get all the a massive abundance of these crimps and the four wire colors, four wire colors Softflex provided to us plus ear wires over at softflexcompany.com. So don't snooze on that if you're enjoying <laughs> watching these videos. Um, I personally am ready for another round of jewelry making. I'm, I'm like <laughs> binging and like in it. And it feels really great. So for anyone that's been watching the whole time, um, feel free to, you know, grab some water and get a snack, but don't go away for too long because I know dad's project is going to be so awesome. It's always fun to learn with you. Well, I'll, um, I'll turn my camera around and I have a little, um, I'm going to actually turn it off while I turn it around. And I have a little um, bonus project on my table just for show and tell, Sarah. Yes. So um, let me flip this down. Like the bonus, the bonus material has been so great. Oh my gosh. Yes. So, <laughs> so I wanted to share this because I love to join your your secret stash sales. And sales, yeah. I know these hearts are sold out, but I got this wood heart mm -hmm. in one of the last sales and yeah. also these amazing wood beads with the silver inlay. And this has been my favorite necklace of the season. Oh, so oh, that's so cool. It's just, it's been a fun thing to wear. So I just thought I would show folks like sometimes when you join those secret stash sales, oh, the things you can find. <laughs> so. I'm telling you, I'm sitting here at the bead warehouse right now <laughs> and we are like chock full of goodies. We do a live sale once a month and it's like, <laughs> stuff that comes out of the woodwork. It's like, man, I don't even know when we got that thing, but gosh <laughs> almighty, it's cool. I, I love that you, um, I, I remember when you posted that, Deb, <laughs> your social channels, that necklace that you just showed us right there. And my heart just like leapt like <laughs> through the roof, just seeing something that you had gotten from us, like something special from a live sale. And it turned in, it went onto like Deb's brand. <laughs> I felt very special. So thank you. Well, I, I couldn't resist. Um, anytime I see the heart things and the and all the cool things that are available i just go crazy so um so we're gonna make a bracelet and um some earrings and again simple project and so i think i messed everybody up so sarah talked about how we when all the projects <laughs> when the emails came out like what are you guys gonna choose well i kind of I couldn't help it. Like I started to grab little bits and pieces from everything. And the first thing I had to um, pick was this amazing uh, big heart. And if I could steal a term from uh, Jennifer Miller, it's a chunk of monk of heart. Um, <laughs> it's a big heart. So that got, that got me, but I didn't want to take away the opportunity for someone else to use the smaller heart. So we're going to be using that. And then there's some really beautiful luminous beads in this mix. And um, I, I think that caught my attention too. So there's some beads that really complemented the heart. And then the little, um, the little saucer beads, the squatty bicone UFO looking mm -hmm. um, beads, those also really came into play. So we're going to do, you know, we're going to take a little bit of all of these themes and we're going to put them together. And so let me grab, so this is the soft flex I chose, um, the purple amethyst. And this color is so beautiful with all of the colors that we're using for this project. So really you could use any color. I think we've all said that so far. You could use any soft flex color and it would work. I mean, all of the curated colors for this um, workshop are, are perfect for any of these things. And so what I've got, I'll show you the specific pieces. Here's the heart. Like, oh my gosh, this heart is absolutely gorgeous. So it's a nice size, perfect for a bracelet focal, even for somebody that has a small wrist. And then I've got all of these little goodies and let me dump them out here and I'll show you what, 
what specifically is going to go. So I don't know what this shape is called and if it will focus. Yeah. I, to I me, think that it's like an Artemis, but it's, it really isn't. It's not quite Artemis shaped. Like Artemis was one of Swarovski's bead shapes and it's like, it's so conical. It almost looks like a bead cap. Like that is such a cool bead glass shape. I love it. <laughs> So I think when I when I said I was going to use them, I called them like bullets. Like, I mean, not to take something negative, but like they almost look like a, a bullet in a way, but just kind of chopped off. So, yeah. but the, the finish and the color, oh my God, like they're just amazing. And then I don't know what this shape is either, but oh my Lord, I fell in love with these. Like... These guys are so unusual. What Sarah, do you know what shape what these are called? Because they're amazing. Those are so cool too. That's what I'm, I'm telling you. We are like, this is my mission is to find all of the cool glass shapes and <laughs> bring them to everyone. Um, yeah, they're like they're like um like a 3D arrowhead almost. I don't even yeah. know. We can name them whatever we want. So maybe someone on someone in the the um the crowd that's watching um should come up with a name for these because I I couldn't and I don't even know I think I in my email I called them the odd shaped because <laughs> 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 I don't know what they are like they don't look like anything else so Heather so those... has a good idea actually Heather's calling them um the rocket top shape but maybe <gasps> she's talking she might be talking about the cones with the rocket oh. top shape. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm I I would love for somebody to give us a name for those because they are fabulous and and Sarah these would be great in the future in other colors and all of that. So, yes. the, just, the, the suggestion box is open. Any ideas? <laughs> have, any ideas that anyone has from our gal pals and our guy friends watching just you let us know. We're we are happy to oblige or or at least do some looking. Yes. Then there's these amazing faceted ovals and um, look at the finish on those. They are just divine. Um, so like, see how I'm starting to kind of put together such a soft and luminous palette. I just, I, I'm in love. I'm crazy in love. These are just rounds with a little bit of AB finish. And of course, those go really nicely, tying back to the heart, playing into all that luminousness. And then all of our little, little tiny saucers. Um, I think um, Rachel tried to use all of these, but she didn't, right? So yeah. <laughs> you should have some of these left over. So we're just going to use a few in this project as well. So this is what um, what I'm using now. I did grab some seed beads from my stash. Um, you know, you don't have to use seed beads. You could always throw in a couple more of your little saucers, but I like to add a little bit of seed bead action for some dimension and to get some metallic tone into my um, design. So I've got size 11s. They are just a, a silver color, like a... Uh, antique silver color. So this is what I'm going to string up and I got to look at my notes because I don't remember exactly what I did, but let me see. Yes. Okay. So we're just going to do a simple stringing. So we're going to put on our, actually let me move these guys out of the way. We're going to start with one of our rounds and then we're going to take a seed bead and then we're going to add one of our little saucer crystals and then another seed bead and then I'll show you kind of how these things are looking next to each other. So we've got a little luminous lineup so far. Then from there, whatever we're calling these, <laughs> I've got add one of in the crowd actually, if I may. We've got fluffy triangles. We've got love nugs. Um, <laughs> those are my favorites. 
<laughs> but they're not real they're not brulees because they're not top thrilled. So no. They're they're uh they're love nugs. <laughs> oh my gosh. So they're like a crystal McNugget, like a yeah. crystal Yeah. Cause you know, the McNuggets are never like the same shape. They're always like a kind of a weird shape in the back. meal to me. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to add another one of our little crystal rounds. So I'm doing kind of the, the smaller beads at this end. And actually, no, I did a crystal here sorry doing a, another crystal so trying to get those crystals in for some level of continuity then another seed bead and then another one of these rounds which you the the picture here won't do them justice so for those of you who do have the kits those little round beads are some pow wicked powerful little round beads. They've got some finish on them that are is to die for. All right, then I'm going to introduce the oval. So we've got all different shapes, but all of these colors and shapes play so nicely together. So I'm adding another one of the crystals, and I'll show you in a second how these all look together. So get the camera to pop over. Yes. So look at the, the luminousness, the different tones and shapes. So beautiful. That's why I say like, this is a simple project, but the beads are not simple. They're just not. So then I'm going to grab another one of my nugs and another seed bead. And then, uh, let's see, another crystal, another seed bead. And then I'm gonna introduce that little bullet shape. And in my design, I think I decided to put the flat end towards the center, but you could certainly do it differently. So you could flip that around. That's the thing about this, the shape is you could do so many different things with this. It would look cool bumped up to another bead as a bead cap too, even though it doesn't fit over um, over a bead. It could you know, act as a sort of a quasi bead cap. And then one more crystal and then another seed bead. And then we've got this. So just crazy about this heart. I just couldn't love this more than I do. So I'm gonna put that. Now look at this string of beauty. It's just stunning, stunning, stunning bead mix. Like this mix of beads is just perfect. Um, I'm, I'm crazy about it. Deb, you keep calling this the luminous lineup of beads. <laughs> and, like that name really fits. Like <laughs> that's just a fluff nugget. Like that's just. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, I believe our friends are saying that 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 our nugget bead is actually called a trillion, and I do. Oh, that. I love that oh. too. Worth worth okay. a trillion bucks in my eyes. Okay, I completely <laughs> agree with that. Um, I, I'll have to remember that because now nugget it, nug is like in my brain. The love nug. <laughs> the love nug. <laughs> it's just, that's great. Whoever came up with that one, kudos. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Sherry Miller. Thanks, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. <laughs> That's awesome. She spelled right. well that says sorry to keep like interjecting with the banter here. Sherry spelled the love <laughs> nug L U V by the way. Deb, ah, just, just, I love you, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> L U V love you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay. So um yeah, so this is really like I said, simple, but oh, you know what? I skipped one of my little saucers. So such, such a simple project, but 
the the fact that we've got the purple wire going through all of these luminous beads that adds another layer of interest. Um, I, I find that that's one of the things I love to do with Softflex is when you've got beads that are somewhat transparent, um, you know, have kind of a fun glass finish on them, it just adds to the beauty of whatever it is that you're working with. So that's um, something I enjoy doing with Softflex. So almost strung on here and I'm looking at, and I missed a couple of the crystals. So because this is a simple project, I'm gonna go back. Sorry guys, sometimes it's the simple ones that for me, I have a tendency to not get right. So, I want to use these little saucers, these little crystals, because they are so lovely. And when I saw the the bag of them, Sarah, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all the, the mass of these little little saucers. They're so beautiful. They look sometimes you just need some extra sparkle, you know. Yes, 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 yes. And um I'm not going to reveal anything, but I have seen some other um of the crystal lovelies that you um, have coming. And let's just say um, I'm, I'm bowled over. They are amazing. Yay. <laughs> so almost, almost strung up you guys. So, and I'm seeing over here, I did the same thing over here with missing a bead. So I'm going to grab a bead stopper and then I'm going to cut my, um, I'm going to cut my soft flex, find my cutters and get my soft flex out of the way there. And I missed another one of those little crystals. So I'm just going to go back over here and drop that in and get that right. I strung a necklace this morning for a project and I got all the way done with it and took some pictures of it and put it away. And then I looked at the picture and said, oh my God, I'm missing a bead. <laughs> uh, just, I know everybody does it. It's just, it's, it's always like, oh no, especially when it's a necklace and you have to restring a necklace. Ah, it's not fun. This is an easy one to restring. Okay, so we have our beautiful luminous bracelet with our beautiful soft flex. And because soft flex is so beautiful, there is no need for us to do any covering up of the wire at the ends. So a lot of times when I finish my um, bracelets, I will use like French wire or um, I might use seed beads or something to cover up the end of my wire. But in the case of Softflex, I don't do that because the wire is part of the design. So um, I've got my crimp tube and again, props to um, Softflex, all the love to Softflex for their amazing crimps. Um, we've all said it. So just putting my crimp right down against that last bead. And I'm gonna start with the side that has um, the lobster. And I'm just going to create a loop there. I'm gonna go through my first bead and I want to have a colorful loop visible. So I wanna have a nice colorful loop and room for that uh, lobster to move around and I'm holding on to my wire. I'm leaving a space and I'm holding on to my wire and I'm going to crimp. Now I'm the only one so far that's not using the magical crisp crimper because true confessions, I am terrible at the magical crimper. I need to learn, I need to watch the videos from today, like go back and watch so that I can see what those ladies did. And I think um, I, I've already asked Sarah Ayler to give me a private lesson on how to use the magical crimper because I'm so bad at it. 
I like it. It's good that you use the other one, though. Just in case you don't have the magical crimper at home yet and you want to use your regular crimper, Deb's going to show us how it's done. Yeah. So it's yes. just it and it looks beautiful. I mean, we've got we've got seed beads in here for um, for some metallic. So the very end of the, the bracelet is a crimp. And it looks almost like one of the seed beads. And then you've got your silver at the end. So honestly, it's perfect continuity. And that crimp, um, if somebody, well, another Jennifer Miller um, statement from today, if someone's that close to you um, <laughs> and they say, oh my gosh, you didn't use the magical crimper. Well, <laughs> then <laughs> then that person, um, that person is probably somebody like, that knows too much about jewelry making. <laughs> so most of the time, you're probably not going to run into somebody that sees that. So for our other end, I'm going to grab another one of my little crimps. And I'm just going to create a loop at this end. So just going to put my crimp on and then drop my, and I want my bracelet to have some movement so you never want to um put put that last kind of crimp onto your bracelet when it's all straight you don't want it to be rigid when you're putting it together so i've got everything all cinched down so i'm letting gravity kind of take this and then i'm just going to pull the wire till i get a nice size loop and because again this wire is so beautiful I want to have a nice, visible, pretty loop to attach my lobster to. And I want it to be similar in size to the one at that end, but a little bit bigger because you also want this to be easy to put on. So I'm gonna hold on to my wire against the beads and I'm just gonna give it a normal crimp with a normal crimper. <laughs> and with the camera there we go it's got a regular old crimp but it looks nice and then we're going to cut off our excess and i like to when i'm doing this i like to bend my wire like away and pull that bead away you should have enough play in your bracelet to be able to do that and then i trim my excess and now we have this beautiful luminous bracelet with all the Im amazing, gorgeous beads. Wow. So, I mean, this couldn't be more simple, you guys, but um, the beads are what make this an amazing, amazing project. So simple, simple, clear the palette kind of project get your easy bracelet going I love that. so oh. i thought we could do like a, a pair of earrings too um sarah or at least we'll make one earring too yeah no that's that's great and i like deb that you just hit the nail on the head i gotta just like ooh and all over this bracelet really quick <laughs> because like deb just like pulled she got some great she got the beautiful beads and she did some simple stringing. And I love what you just called that right there. Deb just called this a palette cleanser. Like, as in, you know, maybe you're feeling a little, like if you feel like creative in a rut or you don't know what to make next, like there's so much great education and inspiration online. You just, you just don't know what to pick. So, but like it, the best thing you can do is to just make something, get your yes. beads, tools out, string something and, um, and let the beads do the talking, Deb. And, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's it's gorgeous and and great inspiration too. I I felt like you know and and maybe maybe others feel this way too. Like sometimes you put a lot of pressure on yourself to come up with this like super interesting, crazy you know project. And sometimes you 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 just want to do something simple and. Um, when you have such beautiful materials, beautiful beads, beautiful wire, um, don't put the pressure on yourself to make something like crazy and over the top. This, these beads are incredible. The shapes, the colors, the finishes, and the soft flex is really, really gorgeous. And again, you could use any of the soft flex colors here. I could see even the white 
looking really cool. Where's the white? Um, even if we did white through like some of these beads, these um, really super, like, look at that. So, I mean, any of the colors would look amazing with these beads. So, so yeah, so I'm also gonna do simple earrings, simple. And, but I wanna show you a little something interesting. So um, this is what I would call like a totem earring, like just beads stacked on top of each other. But there's a little something different about this. And that's that this is wire. This is not a head pin, but we're gonna make a little coiled wire head pin for ourselves to do a stacked totem kind of earring like this. So if you don't have head pins, you don't have the right head pins, oh my gosh, have you ever gone into your like head pins and said, why don't I have the exact head pin that I need? Um, so, you don't always need head pins. You can use wire to, to do this very thing. And again, I'm using these same beads to go with this bracelet. You, you have enough to make, um, to make an earring and match your bracelet. So that's what we're going to do. So let me show you how to do this little trick to make yourself, um, to make yourself a little head pin. So I'm using some 22 gauge wire and I'm gonna warm that up because Jem Hawk says to. <laughs> <laughs> and I really try to listen to Jen, even though um, Jen, I'm sure is horrified by what I do with wire, but um, <laughs> I've got a piece of wire and I'm gonna set my wire aside. And what I'm gonna use is um, this little pliers, it's like a bale making plier. This is um, made by Beadalon and this was um, marketed to use with memory wire. And it is amazing for memory wire, but it's also a great bale making plier. It's small. So if you have like a, a larger bale making plier, I can show you another one that I've got that just to give you an example, if I can actually get it out of my tool. So this is like a big one, right? This is what a, a big bale making plier looks like. But this little, little guy, it's like the, the little baby sister of this one. So I like this because it's got such a tiny barrel here that you can make some really cool little coils. So the trick to this for starters is to take your wire and literally get it to sit so that it's not sticking out. So I'm hoping you can see that that wire is not sticking out this way. So it's just kind of sitting between the barrels and I push it around and then I want to reposition my pliers a little bit once I've got it coiled the first one, then I'm going to coil it, pushing, kind of pushing the wire with my finger or holding the wire with my finger. I'm just twisting, just twisting the plier. And then you've got this cute little coil. And that's going to act as a little cushion or a little seat for your beads. Mm -hmm. And and all you need is a pair of chain nose. I like these really thin chain nose. Let me get my other tools out of the way. What you're gonna wanna do is twist the long part of your wire up. So we want that to be where we put the beads. So I'm gonna grab this wire right at the base and I'm gonna turn it up. And so I've got my wire upwards. Let's see if it will focus for me. So not exactly happy with that last coil there. I'm just gonna give that a little more heat. Okay, so we've got our little base. So we've now got a head pin. Now this is a really long head pin. 
but I'll tell you what, I struggle with working with the really short head pins. Um, most of the time they don't make something as long as I would like, but I also have a hard time finishing them up when I have just a little bit of my head pin wire left. So we want to make a long earring and we want to have something to work with up top. So here's my guide and I'm going to grab my seed beads again because I did use the seed beads to um, add little accents. So once I get that first bead on, I can kind of move that coil around to get it in the right spot. So look how cute that is. Just a little, little something, a little decorative end of the earring. And then I'm gonna add a seed bead. These 11 O seed beads will fit um, nicely over 24 gauge wire. Then I've got one of the rounds and adding another seed bead for accent, our love nugget. <laughs> <laughs> I almost called it trillion, but I just can't now. Just can't. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> and then I topped it off with the oval because this color is so cool. And then it will, it will match nicely back down to our bracelet. And then I did add a seed bead at the end. You, you don't have to do that because we're going to just wrap up there anyways. But um, we've got our matching earring. And then we're going to just do a wire wrap loop. And I'm going to use my regular round nose pliers for this because for some reason using the bail making pliers for a uh, wire wrap loop does not work for me. <laughs> I can only use it for coils. There's just, I don't know, something about it. So I've got my, my loop and I'm just going to wrap that around just a couple of times. And I want to give that a nice tug. Give the wire just a nice tug and I'm going to trim off my excess. And then one little thing I like to do, um, sometimes you don't get the wire, like you cut it and you've got just a little, just a little tiny bit hanging out. So I'll just use my, my thin chain nose pliers and give that just a little snug so that it doesn't stick out and look look funky and um, also be obtrusive, like it could scratch you or something. So, so that's our, our earring and all we need then are the beautiful ear wires that were in the kit from Softflex. And you're gonna string those on in the direction that you would like. So I usually pick the side that the wraps looked the nicest. <laughs> um, that's the way I choose. And then I just kind of push my ear wire, that little ball end against the wire. I told you guys, this is a, a really easy project, but these earrings are beautiful. Now you could just as a little, um, project suggestion you could do your coiled end and wire wrap a loop and then wire wrap each one of the beads and you wouldn't need the seed beads um, you could just create more movement and maybe a little more length with these earrings and the other cool thing you could do is if you've got other beads left over um, you could you could create an even longer earring that way. So you could wire wrap some more beads on, but um, I just love the simplicity and just the showcasing of these beautiful beads. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, incredibly luminous beads. The luminous lineup in, in its um, purest form here. Beautiful. And they really do, like they look like a totem pole. They stack right up with each other. Oh, that's just gorgeous. <laughs> so nothing really challenging, guys, but I think even a beginner could do these projects. And, um, you know, I, I think the, 
the the beads speak for themselves. I mean, let's showcase the beautiful beads. And if you've got other leftover beads from the project, you can make other bracelets with some of the Southflex wire. You've got more of that leftover. I know you'll have some of that. Um, there's so many supplies in both of these kits that there's so much more you can do once once you finish with all four project projects and you've still got Brittany coming up next. <laughs> so I'm going to flip around, Sarah. Come on over. I'm going to flip around. Nope. Get my camera. Oops, sorry. Yes, yes, studio looks so nice. Like the back lot <laughs> studio floor. <laughs> it's um it's a little combination of tools and um all kinds of crazy things back there <laughs> oh i like to see myself in the background here i'm like think i'm on camera already with you but i'm not hi hi <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh dad that was really fun just like some simple easy breezy beading yeah and the beads sarah i mean the the beads in this kit are just so, so incredibly beautiful. You guys really nailed this one and all the colors that you brought into it too, the purples and the, the orangey, um, peachy fuzz kind of colors, really beautiful. Well, we, we love to tell stories with our beads at Jesse James Beads. We love color. And that's one of the reasons why we really enjoy working with Softflex companies so very much is because Softflex does color so very, very well with their stringing wire. Um, actually, when I one of my first experiences with jewelry making was at um at bead fest many 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 moons ago like before jesse james beads is like jesse james beads you know now this is like going way back in the past like when we had like mixed check bead strands like that was our first color mixes that we designed the color the color blends and those strands were based off of fashion magazine articles Anyway, when I first ran into Softflex at a, at a bead show back then, they sold their wire in trios. And mm. this particular kit from Softflex for this event that we have right now, you get four wire colors. So it's almost like the wire that I fell in love with, the wire trio I fell in love with, plus one additional spool. And, 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 and it just goes so great with the beads to be able to like see the wire running through. And, um, you know, we're just, we're, we're color fiends over here, over here at Jesse James Beat. So it feels like a good match whenever we get to do a, a play with Softlux. Can I plug one more thing, Sarah? Yes. So um, it's American Heart Month. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so it's a month where we should all be focusing on cardiovascular health. So um, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, so I just wanted to plug that and make sure people know that there's more to just Valentine's Day uh, in the heart of this month. Yeah, it's our, our, our tickers keep us pumping, you know, and it's, um, it's important to bring that up, Deb. Thank you for sharing that. Is there any, um, where can we get involved or learn more about American, American Heart Month? So you can go to the American Heart Association's website and there's all kinds of great information there. Um, ways to donate and to learn about cardiovascular health, um, things you can do for yourself and the ones you love. So um, yeah, check it out. <laughs> that is that's some of the some of the greatest things that we can that we can do and be for each other is, you know, to to learn and to educate ourselves, like to educate ourselves how to make jewelry sure, but also to educate ourselves how we can be healthy and um, and keep keep you know keep ourselves pumping. Yep. <laughs> from one day to the next. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's so important to take care of our minds and our bodies and our souls. And I know that we do a lot of that with jewelry making. Our jewelry making is such a stress reliever. Um, it's uh, something that we all can say, like, you know, to be able to take the time, to take time out of the day, to spend time for yourself doing something that you love is so very, very special. For sure, 100%. <laughs> so um, Deb, I feel like I've got you for 15 more minutes here. So we're hanging out. <laughs> Good, let's do it. <laughs> and Brittany popped in and was like, all right, I'm ready to start early. We could, but no, we got like, we've got Deb. Let's do it. Yeah. For 15 more. So like, Deb, tell us, um, 
tell us something. Tell us about um, like something you've been experiencing or if you want to make something on the fly, we're always game for that too. Hmm. This is up to you. <laughs> well, um, anything. I, I could, pl I could pl well, l you know what? I'll show you one more pair of earrings that I made. Let's and this see. is another secret stash. <laughs> so. <gasps> Stop. Those are so, so these were in the secret stash sale or, or your sale, live sale. Yes. I don't know, maybe two or three sales back. Those are cool. And the little charmies are just adorable. And then I think these beads were from, um, oh gosh, it was the roses and it's red and, and um, gun, metal. gun metal. And these beads are super cool. They're really like matte red. And I just thought for Valentine's day, a little something simple for an earring. Um, you know, and I could wear them in today's show to match all of the love that we're spreading around here. Yeah, so really those are fun. Um, I could also tell you, because my friend Brittany is joining shortly, mm -hmm. that um, Brittany and I are doing a little bit of a collaboration. If you haven't heard it about it, it's a little um, show we're calling Crimped. Tell us about Crimped. Yes. <laughs> I want to know more about as I'm following along in the group and I feel like I have the in on it, but maybe not everyone here that's watching does. So tell us what, what's Crimped all about? What are you and Brittany have cooking? So we are collaborating on a jewelry making talk show <laughs> and it's really fun. So we're, we're doing a monthly talk show and it's the kind of thing you'll want to have a cup of coffee or bring a snack because it's, it's not a, like a quick thing because we're talking about things. So we're not showing you how to make stuff. I mean, Brittany and I both show you how to make things all over the place, but, um, but it's about talking about jewelry making. So sharing experiences, sharing information. Um, we're taking questions from our group. So there's a group called Crimped. And, and then the very most fun thing about this is that we are challenging each other, mm -hmm. for starters, to make something. So a play on the show Chopped, mm -hmm. the whole um, cooking show where everybody has to make something from the same kind of basket of goodies. Yes. So we're doing that with jewelry making and um, and then we'll give the challenge. So Brittany and I will make something, we'll reveal it. And then um, we want everybody else to take the challenge too. So, um, so we're trying to give people another creative outlet and another place to learn things and, you know, just to share information, share what we know. And we're going to have guests on, you know, maybe Sarah, you could come on sometime. I'd love to. So. <laughs> But we've got we've got so many things planned. We're we're getting ready to film um, our second show. So if you go to there's a crimped jewelry series page, and then there's a crimped group as well. So follow the the page, join us in the group. Um, you can go and request to join. We'd love to have everybody, and we're just gonna have some fun. And I get to hang out with Brittany. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? <laughs> You know, that's like, that's something to really be said. Like, I love that you girls are doing something cool and creative and innovative. Like anytime someone comes out, like, we're going to do this. It's like, yes, they're feeling passionate about something like that is again, that ripple effect. Like yeah. you put that out there. It's like, this is what we're doing because this is what we love and we want to try it out. And we all can like feel that energetic ripple of like togetherness and camaraderie and passion for, for what you love creating stuff. Yeah. I think, um, I think both of us have that same intensity, um, for jewelry making. And so coming together, we're very different personalities, but coming together, there's something like magical about that collaboration and that combination. And we want to bring, you know, the guests and some of the ideas to the table that the group is sharing with us. So, um, 
there's so much more room for more energy and the ripples are just going to keep going and going and going. It's going to like be a so wave fun. pool. Woo! Anyway. Like surfing. Woo! All right. <laughs> It's just like such a beautiful showing of, of, of gals. Like we're here for the Galentine's Day jewelry making event. And today we're celebrating love, all kinds of love, beads and friendship. Like the beautiful, beautiful female friendships that, that, we, that we develop throughout our life and that have been developed throughout jewelry making. Like, like Deb was just saying, she and Brittany are very different. They have different personalities. You guys live different lives. Both live in Arizona. But it is jewelry making that that brings you together. Like, tell me about that. Like, how has jewelry making um, really like added to the friendships and the fabric of the friendships in your life, Deb? Well, when I when I moved back to Arizona, so I've got I've I've lived in Arizona, you know, off and on for years. But I moved back permanently about six years ago, and. Um, I discovered people that I've seen online that live here. Now I knew some lived here, but there are some other ones that I didn't know. And so I've gotten to know these folks and Brittany was one of them. And, um, you know, we, we did a, a Jesse James beads and soft flex event together. That's how we first work together. Um, I think it was um, the Halloween one, maybe a couple of years ago or three years ago, maybe. Um, and we met in person and, you know, just like I, I met her, I met um, Julie Peterson also lives in Arizona and I've become friends with her. And like knowing that there are people that are as passionate about jewelry making as me that I can sit down with and like have coffee with, have lunch with, look at beads together with, um, you know, just like we went to the shows, the gem shows together. And there's just something really magical about sharing time with people that love something the way that you do as much as you do. Mm -hmm. um, these and, and these ladies that, you know, I've, I've become friends with and there are others too. I mean, just getting to know them and hanging out with them and talking jewelry and jewelry making. I don't know. It doesn't get much better than that. And having, you know, also having the outlet of people online too, all of the connections like right here is, is really powerful. It's like, you can continue the conversation. Like the in-person stuff is so important. Like it's so nice to have it's so nice to have um, FaceTime with the people that you love and the people that you share something with. Like, and, and I think that that's one of the reasons why the pandemic really like, you know, it took us by surprise. Like, well, wait a minute. I'm used to going to Tucson every year. I'm used to going to Bee Fest or to Bee Joe's to be amongst the people that, that get me and get like the same thing that I'm into. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we started doing these events with Softlex, which then like that ripple effect, then that's how Deb Floros and Brittany Chavers got to be friends. Like it's, it's, it's all these like little pieces of positivity that we can put out into the world that you never know how it's going to boomerang back in like the most abundant sort of ways. Yeah. Yeah. This, um, this community is amazing. Um, I just, I just can't say enough about be people um, and people that are part of, you know, the jewelry making world. They're, yeah. They're all, you know, really special people and we have the ability to see them and hang out with them virtually all the time. Um, and that's why I enjoy, you know, popping in on the, the videos and, you know, seeing what people are doing. It's just fun to have that camaraderie, even, even though it's not in person looking across the table, it's still really cool to be able to hang, hang out with everybody. Yeah. And, and with that, with what Deb's saying, like for all of our friends that are watching along with us, like we had a great crowd here tonight and we are not done yet. We've still got another hour of jewelry making that's going to begin shortly. Um, but I gotta say like everyone that's been popping in and out with your comments saying hello, it's so nice to see you guys say hi. And if you're like, you know, a long time listener, long time watcher, first time commenter, like I urge you say hi, come and say hello hello to us. Like, you know, you don't have to say, even say much, but just to say hello and build that sort of momentum feels really good. And you are all part of this. Like 
just as much as Rachel, Kristen, Jennifer, Deb, myself, Brittany, like all of us are here. You guys are all here too. And we're all doing it together. Yep. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Deb. So, okay. So people are asking where they can go and watch Crypt. So Deb's show, is this something that you can watch? Is it live? Is this something that's pre-recorded? Tell us a little bit more about when and where we can watch. It's pre-recorded. So because it is so long and Brittany's got a day job, so we can't get, we can't get in, you know, it, a video, a live video in any time, like during the day. So we're pre-recording cool. okay. and then we're going to push it out through the Facebook page and mm -hmm. into the group. And um, it's going to be once a month, probably be right towards the end of the month. And then you've got the whole month after the show to participate in the um, challenge. So we're going to give you the challenge that we just took. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you the challenge that Brittany gave me. So we did kind of this, we gave each, each of us gave each other something. Do you know what that girl gave me? She gave me a prescription bottle, like, <laughs> a, like Goldie, her dog. So if you know, Brittany, she has the, the cutest dog, Goldie and Goldie had some teeth removed and had a, she had a prescription from Goldie. I have this sticker from the, this bottle. And um, I had to make something with the prescription bottle. Okay. This is cool. <laughs> and I'm glad that you just explained that or you just told that that bit here because that gives us all a little bit more of like, okay, what what is it that I'm what is it that I'm gonna be watching? What is this <laughs> show gonna be all about? I love that. You girls are so creative. Like, thank you so much for for inspiring all of us and being like just like fun and cool and like weird in like the best of ways like just be like, like unabashedly yourselves yeah like, thank yeah. you you're welcome i i like that i can be myself yeah that's good because i am weird and all of all of those things but yeah. um, but we have all of that common thread again, like the whole jewelry, make, love of jewelry making brings all the weird and all the good and the happy and all of that together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love artists. Like, you know what I mean? That's like put artists, music makers, jewelry designers, like we are all cut from the same cloth and it is a beautiful tapestry that we weave. Am I right? <laughs> Sure is. And I think we all like to have sort of a, a creative mess going on at all times. So there might be some creative mess behind me. There might be some creative mess on the floor next to me. Um, but we all want to bring all of that together, all of that creative mess that we are and that is us um, to, to each other. And it's fun. It's great. So the show, um, the show, Sarah is, is, you know, we want to share information too. So we've talked about topics already and we'll have some topics every month that we share. And we're also going to show, show and tell some pieces that we've made. Um, so just kind of our favorite things and talk about tools and, and folks have given us some really good suggestions for just some kind of quick topics or even more detailed topics that we're going to try and cover throughout the year. So we'd love for people to come and join us and to give us more suggestions and to see what we make um, from our challenges <laughs> each month, <laughs> because um, I think we're going to try and stump each other quite a bit um, <laughs> in the coming months. <laughs> That's part of the fun, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And really Super. cool, really cool to be able to like to just talk, you know, like where like where it was like, oh, we've got some, we got some extra, we got some, some extra time here. It's like, Deb, you want to make something on the fly? It's like, no, nah, actually, let's just like, let's just no, chill. Let's just talk. <laughs> Hang out. Talk about this. Sorry, the, the bonus project was not in the plan today. <laughs> yeah, but the earrings, the earrings to me felt like a bonus. I hadn't seen the bracelet or the earrings before we got started here. And Deb's like, we've got a luminous lineup right here. I'm like, man, she is lining up those beads. So, so much incandescence. Like, look at her go. And then the earrings were just so good too, Deb. Like, they're I always say that it doesn't need to be hard for it to be beautiful. And no. all three classes today, all three chunks of jewelry making time have proven that adage to a T. 
Yeah, I I loved Rachel's project with all of the loops. Um, I really I that really dazzled me. I was like, wow, that's a really cool thing. Very different, very unique. And then Jennifer using the chunk of monk of bead that's in the kit. I couldn't wait to see how she was going to use that because she had been saying, I need to use that bead. I need to use that bead. And I'm like, how is she going to use that bead? And she used it. It looked amazing. That that necklace was really cool. She did a great job with that necklace. I agree. And that because that that bead, that bead, you can find it in a couple other. There's another bead mix, one of our goddess mixes at Jesse James and has it in blue and it's gorgeous. But it's like, what do you do with that bead? Because it's so large. It's so standout. It's something that you'd almost just put on your own, like string it with like several pieces of soft flex running through it and be gorgeous. Yeah. But took it next level. And that yes. was Yes, totally. Yeah. So I I haven't seen what Brittany's going to make yet either. So I'm excited to see what she's going to do. And I'm sure hers is going to be a little more on the complex side. So I can't wait to see, um, you know, all the all the variations of what can be done just with the same package of things. You yeah. know? And we all picked some and um all came up with something different. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to bring Kristen on in here. Kristen Fagan from Softflex is back. Hey, girl. There she is. Hi. Hey, friend. <laughs> yes, Kristen's coming, and then Brittany will be here in a minute. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's your day been, Brittany? How's your day been? Hold on. I'm having, I'm not hearing either of you for some reason. Let's see. The internet's like, we're done. You guys, yeah. this, is, this is this is the internet saying, are you guys sure you're still watching? <laughs> are you sure you want to still keep watching this? <laughs> are you sure you still want to create joy for another hour? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes, for sure. Yes, yes, 100%. Ah. Okay, I'm going to bring Brittany on in here too. Hi, Brittany. Hi. <laughs> I'm having some internet issues, so if I freeze, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we'll get through it. We've been like pretty smooth sailing all throughout today. So if like if anything occurred, I think we're all super forgiving for that. And that red lipstick looks amazing on you. Like we're, yeah, we're doing good. <laughs> Oh, hey, wow. everybody. I've been kind of tuning in and out ah. as the day's been going. I don't know what's going on with my sound. It's not connecting. No. <laughs> I wanted to hop on one more time. And um, yeah, well, I just want to say hey, everybody. And I can't hear you. I hope you can hear me OK. <laughs> yeah. And I did make a headband out of uh, <laughs> Rachel Malice's design. Hold on, so, just show it really quick. So I kind of wanted to pop on and show you how her um, her design idea she made could also be a headband. Yeah. I hope you all been having Adorable. such a fun time today. I know I have put so many wonderful designs and techniques and tutorials and lots of bonus content that we didn't even know was going to happen. So I've been hanging out on the chat. You've been seeing me comment at Softlex Company in the background. And I just wanted to say, hey, one more time, but I'm going to head out because I can't hear you all. <laughs> so, so have so much fun and love all my gal pals. Have the best time with Britney Shavers. And I can't wait to uh, <laughs> go check out what Deb made because I had to go pick up my kiddo in between that. So I got to go watch, rewatch what you made. Um, love to all of you and happy, happy Galentine's Day. All right. See you all soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Kristen. <laughs> Bye, Kristen. Bye. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> Brittany's like, I'm having technical issues, and she starts going to talk. She's like, Here I am. <laughs> I know. I'm here. I was like, In and out, in and out. I was like, There's, there's no way this isn't working. So you just had to keep trying. <laughs> We're just gonna press on and keep on going, guys. We are here on our fourth hour of our Valentine's Day jewelry making party extravaganza marathon binge worthy jewelry making session. 
And we're getting up to our fourth sector, Brittany Chavers. So good to see you. So happy to be here. Great way to end Valentine's Day is <laughs> hop on with some of my favorite ladies. So Yay. excited. Deb, yeah. I loved your bracelet. I'm going to make one for myself. Yeah. Thank you. Can't wait to see what you make. So. Well, uh, no surprise, Deb and I like share a brain. So I made a bracelet and a pair of earrings. Well, two pairs of earrings, but <laughs> they're they're slightly different. Um, <laughs> there aren't any hearts on my bracelet, but there are hearts in the earrings. And um, I used a little bit of a different technique. How, however, it's going to be an easy stranding um, bracelet. Um, and the earrings are pretty different, but I'm excited because now you're going to be able to stack your bracelets. So that'll be really fun. I like that. Yeah, and such a beautiful jewelry making suite. Like what a sweet day we have with all of these projects that have been created that truly go with one another. And honestly, you could stack everything between like the, well, I guess Rachel made the bracelet, but it could be a choker. Then Jen's necklaces, double tiered. Then we've got Deb's bracelet. Brittany's given us another bracelet. We got earrings. We got a bunch of ear holes. You could just Put them all. <laughs> oh, I like those earrings, Sarah. <laughs> cute hearts. Oh, cute. <laughs> Gotta love Target for the big bowl of earrings. <laughs> so what do you think, guys? Do you want to get into some jewelry making? Are you feeling it? I'm feeling it. We're using pink on um, on my project today, but you can use whatever color um, soft flex you'd like because the the um, beads go with every single color that came in the kit. So I'm really excited about that. I am going to have to flip my camera so you can see my my board. So it'll just be a second while I do that. Cool. Yeah. Deb, Deb, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. A great, great project. Awesome chatting with you. It's always a blast whenever we get together. Like I'm so like it's it's a thrill to be able to hang out with you and Brittany Chavers together right here. And also with Jennifer and with Rachel and Kristen today. What a cool, cool day. And I, I couldn't thank you enough for being part of it and, and for being such a good BD pal. Thank you for having me. And I hope the rest of the show goes great. And thank you to Southlex as well. Such a cool, cool event. Thank you so much. Thanks, Deb. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Sarah, I'm having trouble flipping the camera. I think that okay. the um, settings changed. Sorry. Technical That's difficulties are. Oh, okay. Well, she'll be back in a minute. You guys get me for now. <laughs> I'll add Brittany on to, back onto the stream and we'll get into our fourth hour of jewelry making today. It has been a marathon and like we we are not done yet. Okay. I feel so grateful to be able to be amongst such amazing jewelry designers, to have such beautiful, beautiful beads put together by Jesse James Beads, the incredible wire from Softlex, and to top it all off, just our awesome community that's here in the comments watching along and cheering on our makers and making along as well like this is this is this is the part like you know we're talking about the friendship and and the love we have for creativity but taking the time to learn taking you know an hour of your day to get your beads out and your bead mat and your tool and to have that to have those that space for yourself. That's that self-care. That's that self-love, that all important self-love, self-care that is at the base of everything. Because how can you go and like spread love to the world if you don't give love to yourself first? And we're to you taking this moment, me taking this moment, us taking this moment to do something to create for ourselves. That is truly the ultimate gift and, and so, so very, very important. So now we get a little bit more of that. Oh, yay. Oh, my yay. gosh. See Brittany's table. Wow. That dish has got my name all over it. <laughs> I got these in Tucson and African Village, so I had to show them off. Oh, you um, love it. <laughs> but I like seeing it with the beads inside. It looks yeah, really it's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sorry about that. I just technical difficulties are my middle name today, I guess, but um, I'm going to be using this pink, this really pretty pink that was in the Softlex kit, the pink tourmaline. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be using an array of beads from the Jesse James beads portion of the kit, 
Um, the thing that screamed my name when I started looking and pawing through this kit were these little carved roses. So I'm so excited those were in there. And Sarah, did you say those are rose quartz? They are not actually. They're mother of pearl shell and oh. they're it's like a crushed shell powder that's been then mixed with a little bit of an adhesive and put into a press to get that flower. That's so shape. cool. That's yeah. so cool though. I love that. That's how um, you see the different striations through it is that is because it's the shell. Oh, very cool. I love that. And then um, we're going to be using some beads from this beautiful crystal strand. We're going to be using those hearts. Um, everybody who knows me knows I love hearts. So <laughs> you can see I've got two heart bowls here. Um, but we're going to be making a pair of, or two pairs of earrings if we can get to them, which I think we can, and a bracelet. And my bracelet's all pink for the most part. And I'm going to show you how to turn your bead into a, clo a closure instead of using a clasp. So I use this a lot when I don't have a clasp that matches my project. Say you're working with like a really different metal than you're used to, or you just don't have anything in your stash that matches. It's always um, good thing to have in your arsenal to be able to turn your beads into a button. So we're going to learn how to do that. And then um, I have a couple pairs of earrings that I'll set off to the side, but um, let's get started. I'm going to lay out this bracelet so we can see the pattern. And um, you can absolutely, I mean, there are tons of beads left over from the entire class. So you can use whatever beads, whatever pattern you want to use. Um, Mine is a little bit longer. I've got a little bit of a fluffier wrist. So mine's probably about seven, between seven and, uh, and a half and eight inches long. But please, please, please make this yours and um, just make it the length that you need. So I'm going to open up my, um, my strands that I need for this bracelet. And I'm also grabbing beads out of the mix and um, I'll show you I think I've already gotten them off to the side here but I'll lay I'll lay out the beads slowly enough that you can see what the pattern is so I'm just gonna move these down a little bit and I'm gonna give you a slightly different take on it if you if you have some head pins or a, a jump ring you can also make um, a charm and put a charm on your bracelet as well so I'm going to need one of my flowers. We'll need um, some of the pink rondelles. We'll need um, off of this gla uh, clear glass strand, there were some almost like table cut beads. We'll need a couple of those. We have this English cut or star cut bead. Do you know, Sarah, what that is? Is that quartz? That's rose quartz, yes. Okay, very That's cool. That's rose quartz, and the rounds in the strand are also rose quartz. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. We'll need all six of these pearls from our mix. I have a little bead tray over here. And um, we're going to need our little sheriff stars, our crystal rondelle spacers, our little, I call these bling balls, rhinestone balls. Mm -hmm. I love those. Anything with sparkle, I'm going to be a huge fan of. <laughs> and um, thankfully, Josie Jude's Beads has a lot of sparkle up their sleeves, right? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll need, um, did you say that these are rose quartz as well? Yes. Okay, so we'll need those Perfect. two. Very cool. And we'll need these two crystal rondelles again this is a longer strand bracelet so you can edit um, add in remove whatever beads that you need to do to make it your own um, and i'm just making sure that i have enough oh, we'll need the rest of these sheriff stars i love yeah. that you call them sheriff stars <laughs> i can't call them anything else <laughs> at this point like that's all i think of them as <laughs> and then i'm just going to move the rest off to the side because we actually will be ending up using some of those in the earrings that we're going to make. So I'm going to start by putting on my um, my rose and we're going to make it into a button. I'm going to take a crimp tube from Softflex, put that on, and then I am going to put on my rose. And the really cool thing about this rose, it makes it so easy to make it into the closure. It's got this nice groove. So our soft flex wire just lays right in that groove. 
and I'm going to come around the flower just on one side and then come back through that flower. Or I'm sorry, back through the crimp. And then we'll snug it up against the flower. It doesn't have to be right up against the flower, but pretty close. You don't want it to be too loose. And I heard Deb talking about using regular crimping pliers. I'm using regular crimping pliers today too. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I just put that um, crimp right in the largest valley of the crimping pliers. And as my uh, channel on my channel, I always say squish. It's my favorite part of crimping. <laughs> And then I turn it 90 degrees, put it in the next channel, squish again, and then I always just squish one more time. Okay, so then I'm going to cut this off of my spool. Typically, I make my bracelets on the spool because I don't want to waste wire, but since we've already crimped onto one side of the bracelet, we need to, we need to string from the other side. So this is where you can use your imagination, um, put in beads from your own stash, whatever you'd like to do. And then I'm just going to do another one in the same configuration. So I'm putting on a crystal rondelle, um, one of these little table cut beads. I just love them. They're kind of sparkly and frosted at the same time. Um, another crystal rondelle. And... The cool thing about the kit was there were two different metals. So if you're a mixed metal girly like me, you can mm -hmm. you, use your gold and your silver. On the bracelet, I did just use silver, but on a, the earrings coming up, I used both. So, and then I'm going to put on my rose quartz, more rose quartz. I love that there's a differentiation between these two, and they're the same stone. I like that. And then a pearl. And then my sheriff stars are going to sandwich my two larger, like peach color, almost that peach fuzz color, rondelle. And then we'll do another pearl. Crystal rond, a smaller crystal rondelle. And then we need the, um, these really fun, like almost like majestic. I don't know what color these are supposed to be, but I call them mystic almost. They've got a bunch of different colors, like purple and green and blue in them. We're they're so special. Points. Yeah, those, they're so gorgeous. Beads, like, like pictures and the video that just doesn't do them justice, how gorgeous those beads are in person. They're like right. showstoppers. I know they make my eyes go wide. <laughs> I <never laughs> something like that. Like, oh, that's shiny. <laughs> it's like candy. And then we're just gonna keep going. Um, I really liked the the thought of just using like the more pinky tones on this bracelet. Um, and I did notice that everybody kind of chose a color palette. I know um, Jennifer's was orange. Um, uh, Deb's was a little bit more clear because of her, of her big, uh, heart and, um, Rachel's was kind of like that taupe color. So I like that we all kind of stayed in a different color tone. And I'm just going to keep going. Okay, here we go. Such a pretty pinky purple color palette. Mm -hmm. And I was curious how the product, how the, um, how the projects were going to churn out with terms of color because um, typically when we do these classes, our designers will choose like, okay, I'm going to take the bead mix and all right, I'll take this bead strand and Someone will also chime in, all right, I'll take the other bead strand. But this time around, Deb was the first to claim her, her beads. And she said, well, I'm going to take the heart, the big heart from the strand. And then for the bead mix, I'm going to take this one, this one, and this one. I was like, oh, well, that, that, we don't usually do it that way. But uh. <laughs> uh, I know. And I was like, okay, well, this will be like a puzzle then, right? <laughs> so. 
Well, well, but that's why it's like really kind of cool because I did think that the projects were going to turn out like kind of like all like a mishmash of all the colors, like everyone mm -hmm. was going to use all the colors, but it wasn't that way at all. And man, you guys, it made it made it fun. Like it, it definitely added, I think, a little bit of a challenge for our designers choosing which products they were going to use and which beads were available to them. Um, but you guys have just knocked it out of the park. They, yeah. And it, 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 I think it did add a little extra challenge to it, which is cool. Of course. And you know what? It was funny because I was like the whole time I didn't really claim anything, even though my whole, my heart was set on the roses. I just didn't really say it. And then nobody chose the roses. So I was super, super happy. <laughs> so um, I am just going to go back to where my rose was at the beginning. And I slipped the um, the tail end of that wire through a few beads. Just I, I don't like seeing the um, cut wire right up against the crimp. So I just slip it through a couple. I'm going to trim it off here. I did jump in when Jennifer was saying she was saving these little teeny pieces, but I couldn't understand what she was saving it for because I missed that part. Did she say what she was saving the little tiny pieces for? Oh, of the soft flex wire? Yeah. So that you can put them in like the tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. You could put them into like a clear Christmas ornament at Christmas time and, and make a Christmas present for Sarah Ayler and for Christmas. Oh, that's cute. I love that. <laughs> She was also saying that she doesn't like to waste it all. So if there's like any bit of a wire that's reusable, she just puts it off to the side so that she could reuse it later. Um, but she had seen someone create a Christmas ornament with all bits of colored soft flex wire and it looked really cool. So that's oh. where that one came from. Neat. That's neat. I like that. All right. So I've finished stringing my um, components and I'm just going to put on a another crimp tube. And um, very similarly to the way that you finished off Deb's bracelet, we're going to come back down through a couple beads. However, my loop is going to be a little bit larger because we need it to fit over the rows, right? So I am going to just take my rows and um, put it in the middle of that loop and then tighten um, my bracelet. Now, we don't want this to be in a straight line like this while we're uh, crimping the other end, it's not going to look well, uh, right and it won't drape well over your wrist. So I always say keep it loosey-goosey and um, kind of draped like this. Just make sure there aren't any huge noticeable gaps. I'm going to take my crimping pliers, put that in the largest valley, and we're going to squish. My, my hope is one day that people will start saying squish out loud with me. <laughs> and then we'll squish again. And then squish one more time. And then I will go, just take my nippers and get in as close as I can to the speed. Do not snip your main wire. I've done that multiple times in the past. And then you have a closure without using a clasp or a jump ring or um, any other tools other than your crimp tubes and your wire. So super easy, but kind of a different way to do your closure. I did end up taking um, an eye pin on one of the second roses and I just made a quick charm. Um, and I have a jump ring here and you can also add that onto your bracelet if you wanna make it a charm bracelet. Just add it on like it's a bead or slip it on somewhere else in your project. Super cute. Just slip that on right here. And then you have a charm bracelet. So cute. I love these beads together. They're so pretty. Wow. What a what a great usable technique to learn how to make a bead and use it as a button. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> I do it quite a bit, <laughs> but it's, it's easy and it gets the job done. So now I have two to wear, but uh, we still have time and I still have two earring designs that I'd like to show you. And one of the earring designs can be made with just soft flex, or if you're not as confident using soft flex, you can do um, the same design using an eye pin. So what I'll do is grab one of the smaller hearts that was on that heart strand, one of the pink hearts that was in um, on the rose strand, um, a gold bling ball and a gold uh, rhinestone spacer. 
I am going to take some of my pink wire <clears throat> and cut that off. But again, any color, whatever color you want to see is the color that you should use. And I'm kind of going to make a um, head pin out of my wire. So I'm just going to slip on a crimp tube. I am going to take my crimping pliers and just squish. And then I'll turn 90 degrees and I'll squish again. And I'll squish one more time. <laughs> and then I'm just going to cut off any visible wire at the end. And it'll be fine. This is not going to slip off. I am just going to load on my beads. So I'm taking the larger um, uh, heart first, the rhinestone spacer, the next heart, and then the bling ball. I just realized I make up a lot of words for these <laughs> for these beads. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be called the bling ball. I don't know if it's supposed to be called the sheriff star, but I just I just call them whatever I want to. I think like that's like really like like part of the fun is that part of the <laughs> right. so I just can't go on and just name the beads. <laughs> um, this would also be a really cute purse charm too. If you wanted to add like a clasp at the end or a keychain, um, it's just a cute little stack of really sweet beads um, and then what I'm going to do is just come back down through my um, bling ball and the the um, crimp tube move everything down and then we just want that loop to be just big enough to go over our earring finding so it doesn't have to be any bigger than that just make sure that everything else is straightened out and move down this is okay if you want this to be tight because it doesn't need to bend or, or move any specific type of way. All right, so then we're going to squish <laughs> and turn 90 degrees and we're going to squish again and one more time. And then I'll just cut that off right there. And then we'll take one of our earring wires go and if the um, little piece this loop doesn't fit over the ball that's okay you just feed it on the other way here we go and we have our cute sweet little valentine heart earrings oh and i used a different size spacer on both of them so be careful when you're doing that there are two different size spacers in the kit but I think that's super sweet and so one. sparkly. Wow. Gosh, the hearts, the hearts, the sta heart stacked on hearts is so cute. And man, oh man, it's so neat how you can see that wire running right through them. Yep. Really do something for it. Um, I also did a variation. If, like I said, you're not too sure with wire and doing a loop like that. Um, I, I encourage you to learn because it, it'll, be super easy once you get it down. But I did do a version with a head pin, um, almost exactly the same, but I noticed with the head pin, the uh, rhinestone spacer didn't fit as well. So I grabbed um, this bead cap that was in, uh, I think the mix and put that, and it fits right into that heart. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'll just put another heart on and that fits right into the bead cap. So it's just another variation. Um, and then I put the bling ball on the top. And then um, I did do a simple loop here. If you if you really want to, you can do a wire wrapped loop. Um, but to do a simple loop, there are two different ways. I'm gonna show you the easiest way. Just turn your um, head pin 90 degrees and then we're gonna cut that off so there's about a half inch left. Take your round nose pliers and just turn that back toward your beads and you have a really quick little dangle which you can use any way you'd like but certainly as an earring or a charm or however you want to use it we'll just put that on our earring and that's the other way to use those beads see slightly different but still super duper cute 
I'm curious the the hard head pin versus the soft flex. Like, how does that? I feel like it might be a little hard to see from the camera, but how does it feel? Like, how does the weight of it? How does it dangle? In your opinion, Brittany? So this one with the head pin's a little heavier. Mm -hmm. um, I think they dangle the, about the same. Uh, it's just really. I think it's just what your preference is. Cool. They're very similar. Um, and then if you're interested, I have one more earring that I want to show you. Always. <laughs> Always and this one's a little, um, a little bit more difficult, but still pretty beginner friendly. Um, I took four of these little purplish pink, um, crystal rondelles from, I think these were in the mix. So I have four there. I also took one of the Shambhala beads, which I just love how sparkly that is. Mm -hmm. um i took a um, another one of the crystal rondelle spacers and a bead another one of those same bead caps okay and for this one we're also going to need two crimps so for the first part of the earring we're going to load on three of these crystal rondelles Um, and then we're going to kind of move those down to the middle. And then I'm going to take this fourth one. And I slipped it onto the right side of my wire. And then I'm going to take the left side of my wire and also slip that in there. Going the opposite direction. And then we'll just kind of pull that till all four beads meet down in the middle. Okay. So it looks like that. We've got like a little diamond of beads. Wow. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I love it. And then I am just going to take my both my wires, come up to the top. Oh, I didn't do the middle very clearly. It's <laughs> a little wonky, but I'm going to just cut off. Actually, you know what? I'll leave it like that. And then I'm going to put on a crimp tube on both pieces of my wire and slide that down toward our cluster of beads. <laughs> Okay. And then we're just going to crimp that like we normally would, but you really want to make sure that you get the crimp kind of in the middle of the top bead. So see how it's kind of sliding off to the, to the left here. I'm going to just try and pull my wires until I get that in the middle because we don't want it to be a lopsided earring. Nobody likes lopsided earrings. I mean, unless you, you do, I mean, I guess <laughs> asymmetrical earrings are in, but that's not the look, Actually, that's not the look here. <laughs> uh, so, and that's what, this is why I said it's, it's kind of not beginner friendly, but I think if you're determined, you can do it. It's just a little more finagling than I wanted to do as a, as a beginner on an earring. So I'm going to slip that in. Ooh, it keeps sliding over to the side. And it's user error, not product error. <laughs> and then I will just squish, turn 90 degrees, and squish again. And then I'm going to take, um, actually, I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to cut off my shorter wire. So that's held in place by that crimp tube. We don't want, we no longer need it. And this is almost becoming, again, like a head pin. Um, I'm going to slide on my... Um, rondelle spacer and that's going to seat over that um, crimp tube that we we crimped okay so it's kind of hiding that from view then I am going to put on my Shambhala bead my bead cap and I am going to put on another um, crimp at the top yay <laughs> Somebody's excited. <laughs> we had a snow day today, so no one's in the office. But my way to lost power at at my mom's house here in Pennsylvania, where Rodrigo and I are staying. So we were like, I was like, we got to get to the warehouse. I know we're closed for the day, but like, oh, we need electricity and internet to run this yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> so my mom and Rodrigo and and Axel Rose, our golden retriever. Um, that axle is getting cheered upon back there is what's happening. <laughs> I figured that's what it was. I was like, I know the dog just did something fun. <laughs> so I um, pulled that wire back down through um, my crimp tube and my bead cap, just like we did on the last earring. And then what are we going to do? 
squish. squish. Yeah, we're gonna squish, turn ninety <laughs> degrees, and squish again, and then squish one more time, and then I am going to nip that off. Find my earring wire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I actually think that's more interesting than me making jewelry. I kind of <laughs> want to see what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but here is our pair of earrings what? That is so cool so just a fun little cute charm that you can make out of and you can do this with any size bead you can do this um uh with any type of bead it doesn't have to be a rondelle it could be a round it could be metal beads whatever um you have on hand but i thought that was a little fun little fun pop of crystal yeah, they look like little quatrefoils. Yeah, that's actually a really great, um, a really great description. I love that. <laughs> so we made three different things really quickly. <laughs> I love it. These are great. I mean, all the projects today were just like fun and just like no stress and just great ways to put some beads and jewelry together, way to, to, to put the beads to work. And uh, I really let the wire be the backbone of all the projects. Yeah, I had a ton of fun and I can't wait to go back and rewatch some of them so I can get some ideas. <laughs> um, I am going to, you're going to probably see my ceiling for a second and then I'm going to switch back to my face. Ceiling first, then Brittany. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, I was upside down for a second. <laughs> there we go. I figured it out this time. I didn't um, have to leave and come back. So there we go. That's, that's yeah, right. yeah. Oh, I'm just I'm realizing sure. your shirt is like pink and fluffy. You remind me of Cher from Clueless. Ah, thanks. <laughs> what? There's Axel. He's <laughs> Axel. Come on back. Come here. Come say hi. This is <gasps> Axel. Axel, here. Say hello. Axel. Golden right. is the yeah, maybe we'll have the dog. We can have the dog say hello. Yeah, thank you. It does, it's been Galentine's, Galentine's to the max. And like, what a really cool day to just like get to pal around with these amazing designers. Brittany, you like, I love that we like finagled for the finale with your last earring pair that we did. And um, yeah, just like, what a, what a cool day. Oh, y'all, there's Goldie. Axel, come here. Come on. Axel, come say hi. He's like, you woke me up for this? <laughs> He's like, we have been in this warehouse. There's been nobody here for the last four hours. I'm just going to wear some earrings. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, Goldie. See, so this is like exactly like, I love how we can like, we can, we can open at the close. We can like finish just the way that we started. And what I was talking about, Brittany, in the beginning of the show with Kristen and with Rachel, gosh, four hours ago, we were talking about celebrating all the different kinds of love. You know, the love that we have, like romantic love, the friendship love, I love for creating, I love for our pets and how full our lives really are. Don't you think that we like mm -hmm. get to like have all these things and just like when we open our heart to experiences and we, we open our heart to giving love and also receiving it, that's like where the magic is. And look at you. Like you just made all these beautiful projects. You've got your dog with you. Like that's yeah. That's My favorite type of day where we're beads, beads and puppies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we've got a, we got a big announcement that's coming up tomorrow um, that you'll have to stay tuned and see what's coming up on the Jesse James beads page for some fun that we've got for the spring um beads and blank but i also really love beads and puppies like Brittany just suggested <laughs> I think there's an idea in uh, if you ever do beads and puppies sign me up hopefully it's in person and we could do like puppy yoga but with beads <laughs> that would be amazing yeah, I, love it. I love it like like the more we get together the better the ideas are born like i swear we just like, but put a bunch of creative minds together and like poof something amazing is gonna happen yeah for sure. Well, it has been an excellent, excellent day. All of our designers, Rachel Malice, Jennifer Miller, Deb Florals, and Brittany Chavers here, you all have just absolutely crushed it. And I know I'm speaking for all of us who have been watching and being involved that this has been so much fun. And it's so fun to make along with you with Softlux Company and with Jesse James Beads. Well, thanks for having me, Sarah. I'm always excited to join in. I think this is my 
Is this the third Galentine's Day in a row? I can't remember. I think so. It's think something so. like that. I, I didn't get to be, I was, uh, I was out of the country for the last Galentine's Day. Um, and I think it was Sarah Ayler that hosted the whole shebang last year. So I said, all right, I will take the torch. I'm happy to lead us through. And it's, it's just so fun to do like a marathon like this. Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm always happy to be back. And Brittany, you always bring such cool energy to the table. Your projects are fun. You're fun to learn with. Just fun to hang out with. So thanks for being here. And thank you to all of our designers that took part today and all of our gals that joined here in the crowd. It's been real. Bye, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. We'll see you soon. We'll catch you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.